A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Are you a Penn West California student looking to get involved in media? You have two great choices, and for both, all majors are welcome. CUTV is the home for Vulcan Sports. Be a part of 80 plus live games, both home and on the road. We're looking for announcers, camera operators, graphic operators, and much more. There are also opportunities to develop your own shows. Go to our YouTube page, CUTV Sports One, and see all of the content. WCAL Radio gives you the opportunity to play your music and develop your own show. Be heard locally over the air in a 40 mile radius and worldwide online. That's 91.9 FM, Power 92. SAI Media of CUTV and WCAL. Get out, join up, be seen, and be heard. Mic check one, two, three, four. 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 Mic check.
Hello, Adam, everyone, and welcome to Addison Stadium, home of your California Vulcans. Today, we will see the California Vulcans go up against the Seton Hill Griffins in an awesome homecoming matchup. My name is JJ Robinson, and with me today is Braxton Turner. How are you doing, Mr. Turner? I'm excited. Uh, excited to see the matchup here between these two teams here. As am I. The California Vulcans obviously ready to come out strong as it is their homecoming game. Always fun for homecoming games. And it is going to be a wet and wild one. Coming into this game, last week, Eric McCann III was the Cole Bowl MVP with 101 rushing yards in 21 attempts, becoming the PSAC athlete, uh, Offensive Athlete of the Week. Yeah, I was there um, at that game against IUP. Eric McCann, that game just put a all-around game together, uh, was finding holes, was patient when he needed to be, and sped it up when he needed to. And here come the Vulcans out onto the field now as the band is playing, everyone getting super excited for this wet and wild matchup. <laughs> Last, last week's game was against IUP in the Cold Bowl, California winning 20, excuse me, 30 to 20 over the IUP Crimson Hawks. And last meeting between California and the Seton Hill Griffins was a 21 to 14 win for the Vulcans. California is on a 10 game winning streak, never losing to Seton Hill in their history of play. Tail the tape on the screen, as you can see, we are, California is averaging 32.6 games points per game uh, and only allowing 20.2, averaging about 429 yards per game with a total time of possession around uh, uh, 34 minutes and 27 seconds. And there's only been around uh, 72.4 penalties uh, for the Vulcans this season. And for the Seton Hill Griffins, they have only uh, scored around 19.5 games points per game only and allowing uh, a whopping 31.3 points per game. They are averaging around 254 yards a game with around 28.57 seconds uh, of time of possession and are allowing about um, 110 yards per game on penalties alone, which is a lot of yards. Definitely Seton Hill not wanting to see that. Yeah, Vulcans uh, generally this season have been generally a bit more reserved in, the, in that in that area, um, in general, um, both teams for the Vulcans, defense and offense, being about mid middle of the road, not saying they're terrible or anything, but um, well, one thing to look out for will definitely be the Vulcans' uh, defense, as the Vulcans' defense has definitely pulled them out of deep holes when they when it is needed. Um, now the run defense being has showing being better uh, than their pass defense. I guess we'll see how well they're able to work together today. Most definitely, as you said, defense, a very strong point of this California uh, team. California defense is number four in the PSAC West, which is amazing. And on the other side of the field, the California Vulcans are ranked number three in offensive possession, which is exactly what you want to see. You want an offensive heavy team, especially on homecoming. Who doesn't want to see a lot of points for the Vulcans? Yeah. And time possession generally translates. I'm not saying it always does. Generally translates to higher scoring games and more games won. Not that has not always been the case, but I guess we'll see how it translates today. Most definitely. California is coming in to this game. Number two in the PSAC, just under uh, just in the PSAC, which is definitely where they like to continue that streak. Of course, last week was a win, and they want to continue winning here at home on homecoming. And as it looks like, the Californians are set to receive at the start of this first half. Special teams last week for, both, for IUP and the Vulcans looked kind of rough. Now, granted, the weather did... Uh, make it worse than what it actually was, but I guess we'll see how the special teams is able to bounce back this week. And there is the whistle as the kick team for Seton Hill is ready to kick off the ball. And here we go. Let's play some football here during homecoming. Ball is fielded in the end zone and down to a knee. The ball will come out to the 25-yard line for the California Vulcans. In the end zone, it'll be first and 10, Vulcans from the 25. 
first and 10 from the Vulcans, 25 on your screen. You can see the Cal U offense. Eric McCann, the third, of course, highlighted on the screen with that amazing performance during against IUP last week, winning PSAC Offensive Player of the Week. And here come, and this is the Seton Hill, Seton Hill defense also coming onto the field to be a amazing game just in the trenches alone. And here we go with Black at quarterback. Black in the gun formation, one running back off to his side. Motion by California. Hand off, play action down the middle. Deep pass down the field right away. Touch, this looks like it is going 10-5. And that is a one play touchdown from your California Vulcans. Amazing play there by the Vulcans. Just a little play action going down the field. And that is a touchdown for number 12, Eric Willis the third. Quick scoring touchdown by the Vulcans. Uh, play action pass kind of caught um, Seton Hill off guard there as they Davis Black had all day to throw. Willis just wide open as we've seen multiple times before and cashing it in. Anthony Biko now on to attempt the extra point. Ball snapped and kick is up and it is Good. California takes a early 7-0 lead over the Seton Hill Griffins. We'll be back here on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Welcome back, everyone, after you have just seen the California Vulcans take a very early lead on a one-play touchdown pass to your number 12, Eric Willis III, on an amazing bomb down the field off a play-action pass. California's kick team now on the field to send the ball over to Seton Hill. And they are now lined up on the field. Anthony Biko ready to kick off the ball. And here we go. Let's play some more football. Fielded around the four yard line, takes it up the sideline, far sideline. And he has a nice angle. Can someone get to him? Just in time, yes, again, as he has forced out of bounds on the Seton Hill sideline. Welcome to let's, let's take a quick look at the Cal U defense. As it would definitely be the one to look out for today. Uh, Dominic Solomon again with a, if I'm mistaken, an interception against IUP. The defensive uh, effort from all, 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 all persons that game was excellent um, in that win. Quarterback for Seton Hill, Hayden Tesca. Back at quarterback in the gun formation with uh, running back onto the side. Pass down the sideline. Looks like it is caught for about an 11 yard gain. Surprisingly, both teams starting off quick with a uh, pass. I thought with this weather, uh, teams would send it on the ground first, but I guess the rain has died down just a little bit. Completely agree. Still, the ball is wet, so the receivers really got to concentrate on bringing that in. Three receivers to the bottom of your screen, one running back in the backfield. Drop back pass down the middle, intercepted by California, taking it down the close sideline. Looking for some blockers, getting some help, and he takes that in for a pick six. California taking that in for a nice touchdown. And that is number two, Dominic Sullivan for your California Vulcans with a nice pick six. On it again as he had that interception again last week, and just this looks like last week had it again today, turning it for a pick six. 
and the kick team is already on the field for the Vulcans getting ready to get this extra point up and over. Biko on for the kick. And the kick is up and it is good. California with a nice, amazing pick six, as you have just seen. And we'll be right back here on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Suffering from World Cup withdrawal? Well, Vulcan men's and women's soccer has you covered. Come up and watch the region's best soccer teams do battle in a combined 18 home games at the beautiful Phillipsburg Soccer Complex. In addition, three men's and three women's home games will be featured live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans for up-to-date information on all things Vulcan soccer. Welcome back, everyone. After you have just seen that pick six for your California Vulcans going for a nice touchdown there by Dominic Solomon Jr. Um, amazing play there as California is already on the field to kick off the ball back to Seton Hill. Seton Hill set to receive. California really coming out strong on both sides of the ball. One play offensive touchdown. And now just after two plays by Seton Hill, a pick six going up 14 to zero, not even a minute into this game. And there's the kick, it is going, flying. Looks like the ball will be fielded around the two yard line as he cuts it up the side. California looking to rally him and he goes out of bounds around the 29 yard line. I believe we do have a flag on the play. Oh. Not quite sure what happened there. I believe it's probably gonna be a hold. Came a little bit after the play, so it's gonna be hard to tell. As the officials talk over what happened. Here's the call. Starting to return. Holding. Receiving team. Number 57. It's a 10 yard penalty. First down. And that's exactly what the call was. Holding on the receiving team. 10 yard penalty. From the 20. As the Griffins will now take over at the 20 yard line. Hayden Teska back at quarterback once again. Two receivers to the bottom of your screen, one to the top and one running back in the backfield. Motioning the running back to the other side. Of, and there is a flag. Another flag on the play. I believe it's gonna be a false start. False start. Oh. Offense, number 53. Five yard penalty, first down. That is Barry on the offensive line with the false start, sending the Griffins back once again. I mean, in this game, early Vulcans have jumped on Seton Hill pretty quick, and in little penalties like that, you can't really afford to have them, or at least many of them. Especially so early on in this game when they're already facing a two-score deficit. Yep. Draw up the side for around one, one or two yards. Gain of a yard on the play. One yard gain on that play. Vulcan's defensive front, again, Leventure showing up stop. again, again. We've only had a couple plays Leventure here from Seton Hill. But the Vulcan's the offensive defense, excuse me, defensive line has been a force so far in these games that we've seen this season. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen, one of the top running back on the far side. Motioning the running back to the other side of the quarterback. Drop back pass, quick pass, incomplete, over the middle. I believe kind of a miscommunication there as receiver, not really looking, has, matter of fact, ducked his head when the ball came, just wasn't ready for it. Most definitely didn't expect it there, and it's now third down for Seton Hill. Seton Hill is on the 16 yard line. Behind the sticks as well. Definitely needing a big play here. California looking soft, 
little bit softer in their coverage, expecting a pass. Three receivers to the bottom, one to the top, one running back. And it is a draw by the running back, cutting to the outside. California slamming him and pushing him back. That is bringing up fourth in a round eight, I believe. Solomon and Hobbs on the stop. Bring up a fourth down and seven. It will be now fourth and seven as the punt team is on the field. I see on this run, he cuts to the outside, cuts in, and just gets stopped by the California defense. Not anything he could do about that. Yeah, Cole, the Vulcans defense reading it just a little bit late, but then again, stopping the third down conversion. Now awaiting the punt, and here it goes. It is boomed into the rainy sky. California singing, signaling for a fair catch. Magner's punt makes it to about the 40-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Vulcans from the 40. Be first and 10 from the 40 for the California Vulcans as they take over. On your screen, there is the California head coach, Gary Dunn. California's offense making out, making it out onto the field. Black once again back at quarterback, getting ready to get another uh, drive going here for the Vulcans. Twelve twenty-three still to go in this first quarter. California up fourteen to zero. Quarterback. California with the fullback in the formation. Run up the middle, cut back out to the side. Seems to be stopped by the Seton Hill defense. Can the ball carrier. Griffin's not really fooled that time on that ball quick. Also, the yard on the play. also about a yard. Second, down and 11. Second and 11 with a loss of a yard. California with a running back. Two receivers on the close side and one on the far side. Motioning the running Eric McCann to the other side of the field. Of the quarterback, excuse me. Drop back pass. As he gets lit up, pass down the sideline is incomplete and out of bounds. It was intended for Eric Willis, the third. It is now fourth and 11 for the Vulcans. Coverage there by the, excuse me, by the Griffins just on top of. All the Vulcans not want, really want anyone quite open. Davis Black didn't really have a lot of time to throw and just threw it away. Excuse me, I said third down is, I said fourth down is third down, third and 11. Two receivers on each side, one running back in the formation. Drop back pass for Black, darting it down the field and that is caught along the hashes. Wait for Vulcans first down. That is Amari Hopkins, number nine for the Vulcans. From what I've seen, it looks like Griffin's there just running a cover one, which is a little bit more, not as risky as a cover zero, but just having that free safety float over the top. Just got there a little bit late, and that is not out of time. Seeing Hill definitely good at stopping them for no yard after the catch there, getting the California catching it and just stopping in their tracks. California now with two receivers on each side of the formation, motioning the running back to the other side of the quarterback. Drop back pass for Black. Black down the sideline once again. That is a touchdown. Another passing touchdown for Black. That is Amari Hopkins on the touchdown back to back plays going to him as we await the PAT. And again, that Davis Black to Amari Hopkins connection. Amari Hopkins seeming to be a favorite tar target for Black, and we we're starting to see why. This kind of puts it right on the money, too. Diving for that pylon, getting there just in time as Biko is now on for the kick. Some celebration there on the sideline. Kick is up, and the kick is no good. Score will stay at 20 to zero. California Vulcans in the lead, of course, and we'll be back here on CU TV Sports One and the PSAC Network. Vulcan volleyball is back, and you can have the best seat in the house. 
The Convocation Center will be rocking with 11 home games featuring some of the best teams in the region and the PSAC. All home games will be streamed live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans on all social media platforms for up-to-date schedules and information. Vulcan Volleyball and you, a winning combination. Welcome back, everyone. You have just seen Amari Hopkins with a nice two play, uh, two plays there, getting him down the field on third uh, and 11, and then going for a nice long touchdown pass as he dived for the pylon. California up 20 to zero here in this first quarter with 10.56 left to go. California now on the field, ready to kick off the ball back to Seton Hill. And the ball is boomed down the field. Fielded around the five yard line, taking it up towards the Seton Hill sideline, looking for a cutback. There is a flag already on the play. Stopped around the 31 or 32 yard line. Awaiting the call on the flag. That is now about the second flag we've seen on the Griffins uh, special teams here. As they discuss what is going on on the far side of the field. Here comes the call. During the return, block in the back. Return team, number 57. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the ball. First down. And as we take a quick look at that touchdown here, Black with a nice pass towards the, the sideline to Amari Hopkins as he dives for that pylon. Amazing play, amazing read. Black had all day for that pass. Seton Hill, once again, back out onto the field. It will be first and 10 from around the 12-yard line, it looks. Two receivers on each side of the formation. Motion to the back. Dart to the screen, pa screen pass. Span out of that tackle there, but the Vulcans are able to bring him down around the... Still with the reception. Looks like a, maybe a gain of one or no gain. For as early as we are in this game, uh, the Vulcans' play recognition is uh, on top right now. Um, I say what's key to uh, stopping any offense is recognizing what play that is, and Vulcans are just on top of it right now. On the close hash, one receiver on the close side of the field, two on the far, motioned by the running back to the other side of the quarterback. Inside handoff, bouncing it inside for around a four to five yard gain. be third down and six. Seton Hill really not been able to get anything started. They have had one first down, I believe, so far, and they are really pinned back still only on the 21 yard line of their side of the field. Definitely not the position they want to be looking, they were really needing to get a first down as they are in a very big deficit of 20 to zero just in the first quarter alone. Drop back pass, rolling out. Escaping a sack there, but going down. Sacked. Definitely not what the Seton Hill Griffins were looking to do there. LeBencher on the stop. LeBencher there on the Stopped sack. On the now fourth and four and 11 as Seton Hill brings out on 11. the punt team. From the 11. This Vulcan's defense, uh, their line has, if given time, will get to the quarterback as they did there. Griffin's just been pin pinned back so far in this game. Can't say as they got past the 30 yard line yet. Punt is almost blocked there. P kick, punter goes down. Fair catch on the 50 yard line. No flag on the contact there with the punter as the California Vulcans will now come out onto the field on the 50 yard line. California really been good on scoring. Scored on every drive so far. 
minus one, I believe they planted once so far in this game. But they are up a astonishing 20 to zero lead over Seton Hill. And a lot of that has to do with field positioning as the defense has given the uh, Vulcans offense great field positioning here. California have been really good at creating a lot of pressure for Seton Hill. Not what they, uh, not what Seton Hill has expected as it looks, as they do it, doing a lot of drop back passes and just looks like to be in some shambles as he's back there. Three receivers to the top of the screen, one in motion. Looks like it will be a pop pass and he is coming up the sideline to the 40 to 35 to the 30 yard line on an amazing pop pass there. That is a nice gain for a Vulcans first down. Well, the carry there I believe was Eric Willis again. As you can see on your screen, he cuts it up the sideline, just running as hard as he can. That is an angry runner right there. Vulcan skill guys having, having to work too much, blocking uh, on the front end, just doing their job and doing it well. Two receivers on each side of the formation, one running back in the backfield with Black. Ball, drop back pass towards the far sideline. It is caught for around a three yard gain, I believe. Martin with the reception. Gain of five on the play. That was Mar Martin with a gain of five. From the 26. California now on the 26 yard line. Second and five. Making some adjustments at the line. Motioning the running back. And there is a flag on the play. There's a flag on the play. Fire the snap. False start. Offense. Number 56. Five yard penalty. Second down. False start on Jaheim Basman on the offensive line, sending the California Vulcans back. Five yards. Breaking the huddle now. California now in the pistol, two receivers to the bottom, one to the top, one in the very back of black. Motion coming from California as it is a run to the outside, cutting it back far on the sideline for a nice gain there. Bobby Boyd, the ball carrier. Name of this game, especially on the ground, is getting that outside edge. Falcons getting that outside edge and just making it easy for the backs here. The carry was by Bobby Boyd. Going for a nice run there, and that is enough for actually a Vulcan's first down. California getting the call from the sideline. One receiver to the bottom of your screen, two to the top, two running backs in this formation. Looks like a running back and a fullback. Motion by California. Drop back pass with time going for the end zone. Incomplete, just a little bit overthrown by Black. Intended for Johnson. Intended for Johnson on the outside. Griffins with the pressure. I think they sent, only sent four that time, but they got to him. Got to Black pretty quick, or at least were able to uh, get him off of his rhythm there. Substitutions for both teams adjusting their personnel. California, one receiver to the bottom, two to the top, running back in the very back field. Looks like Seton Hill's looking to bring some pressure. Motion by the tight end. Play action pass to the outside, way too low. California unable to get there. It was intended for Eric Willis. It will be now third and 10 from, Calif uh, from the Seton Hill, I believe it is 21 yard line. Nice little drawn up play there. Just Vulcan's not able to uh, complete it. That's not, and that's not the first time we've seen a screen from them just go a little bit short, as we had also had a couple last week. Looks like it will be the same formation minus the running back on the very side of Black. Drop back pass. Black looking to the outside, going for the catch. It is just out of his reach, ran too far. Looked like it was going for Amari Hopkins. 
last few plays. Griffin's bringing the pressure as Black was head as he was thrown there. Doesn't, excuse me, Griffin's uh, changing up his game plan a little bit just to throw him off his rhythm. And this drive, it worked. California bringing out the kick team. Biko on to attempt the kick. It'll be, look like it'll be a 31-yard kick attempt. And there is a flag before the ball snapped. I believe the call will be encroachment here as we have your placeholder saying a signaling. Start. Actually, is a false start on the Number offense. Penalty, it will now be, I believe, fourth and 15. From the 26. Now Biko back to attempt. Once again, as they are on the 26th around a 36-yard attempt. Biko pretty much automatic this in this season so far with that except with that one miss of the extra point earlier the kick is up and it is no good the score will stay at 20 to 0 as the Seen Hill offense gets ready to take over on the 26 yard line and while we have a moment, let's take a look at the rest of the PSAC schedule for today. Of course, we have our game, Seton Hill against California. Uh, Mercyhurst played Clarion today. Slippery Rock played Gannon. Edinburgh against IUP. East Stroudsburg uh, against Westchester. Uh, Shippensburg against Kutztown. Lockhaven against Bloomsburg. And Shepard versus Millersville. A lot of good games going on today. Of course, ours is our homecoming game, having a lot of fun with the festivities this week into the weekend as well. Because, of course, nothing bigger than the football game. Seton Hill now back on the field. One, one running back, a tight end, one receiver on the bottom, two to the top, and it will be a run play up the middle. California getting there. It looks like it will be around a gain of nine. The ball nice hole open there. California just couldn't get there in time. A lot of behind chase, but no one ever get it. Deep pass down the field in his incomplete overthrown. Pesca's pass is incomplete. It's, it's now third and one. Down. That was a quick third down. Surprisingly, both teams keeping it in the air quite frequent, frequently, especially with this weather, as it is not either helping neither team today. Some substitutions coming in for both teams. California rushing off the field, so there's no penalty. Adjustments being made by the California D-line, and it is a run, and it looks like he was pushed enough for the first Brandon down, the waiting on the confirmation. Will be close to the first down. And it is a first and down. For first down. First and 10 Griffins from the 36. Seton Hill on the 36 yard line now. One of the Griffins' first few downs, I believe, of this game so far. Just struggling to find a rhythm. Two receivers to the top of the screen, one to the bottom, one running back. Tight end in the formation as well. Drop back pass down the sideline. Can he get to it? Yes, he can. That is an amazing catch there by number five. Pass is Mark, Bales Mark Bales Jr. Is a nice first, first down pass there with the play action. California didn't seem to jump on it though. Pressure coming from behind but with an amazing uh, concentration there by the receiver to get his hands in bounds. Now it is a run on the play. Seems to be stopped, but it is enough for another first down, Seton Hill. Seton Hill really seems to be driving on this, uh, driving down the field on this drive. 
That'll be enough for another first down. First and 10 from the 13. First and 10 from the 13. Handoff down the, up the middle for a nice gain there. Runs into a wall, though, again, around carries. five yards on the gain. Griffin's just quick, play after play after play, keeping the Falcons on their heels and is working this drive. Toby and LaVenture on the stop. Taking a little bit more time with this one, this play right here. Second, down and six. Second and six from the California Nine. Two receivers on the bottom of the screen, one on the top in a tight end in the formation. And the pass is incomplete. There was a pump fake by the quarterback to try to have California jump. Unfortunately for them, it did not work. Ball goes out of bounds, out of reach. It is now third down for Seton Hill. Tesca in this game, uh, just really struggling to find a rhythm or find his man, except with the, with the exception of that long completion there. Just this game, just throwing over, overthrowing his guys just by a bit. Seton Hill getting the play call from the sideline. Lined up two receivers in the bottom, one on the top, and running two running backs, I believe. Excuse me, running back in a tight end. Motion to the sideline, high snap, but is able to get the play off. And it will be short of the line to gain. It'll be around fourth and three. And it looks like they are bringing their kick team out onto the field to attempt a field goal attempt. For the Griffin. Hogger back onto the field to attempt the field goal to get onto this board. Kick is up and it is blocked. Almost making it through the goal post, but it is just hit at the crossbar. My goodness gracious. Even with the defense giving up and coming with a win, the only giving up a, a field goal is, is a win in and of itself. Special teams coming up big there. Okay, just to get a hand on it, just took enough off of it just to hit off the front crossbar. California will take over on the 13-yard line. Excuse me, on the 20-yard line. Black in the offense back out onto the field for the California Vulcans. Three receivers set on the top of your screen. One running back in the backfield. Running back motion out to the close side of the field. Snapped, pass towards the running back. Stays in bounds, trying to make a move, unsuccessful move there. Seems to slip on the wet turf out there. But it is enough for a first down. For Black, that play there was Ian Willis the whole time. He immediately knew where he was going to throw it as, complete, as it was completed there. Two receivers at the top of the screen, one on the bottom, running back in the backfield next to Black. Motioning to the other side of Black. Handoff. Excuse me, read option. He kept the ball. Looks like there will be no gain on the plane. I'll say a little bit of a rare keep for Black there. McCann seemed to have all, had all day to run. I thought for sure he had the ball there. California, two receivers at the top, one at the bottom of the screen, a tight end of the formation with a running back in the backfield. Black snaps the ball with a drop back pass towards the inside of the field. Looks like it will be enough for a California first down. Well, as a matter of fact, both teams so far favor, favoriting, favoring, excuse me, these in and out routes. I said when you're coming in that quick, 
quick pass, as I say, for on the, on the defensive end is defensive side is so hard to guard against. Defensive line doesn't really have much to get there, and generally, if your corners or backs are expecting a deep pass, they're generally a few yards off the receiver. Bunch, two bunch set down here on the close side of the s on the bottom of the screen. Communication with the sideline from uh, Willis, and it looks like it will be a run up the middle. Not much of a gain. That looks like a gain of two on first down. That was Eric McCann. And McCann so far this season has been excellent. From what we've last seen, averaging just about 4.7 yards per carry. That may not seem a lot like a lot, but I guarantee you almost five yards a carry is enough to get your team rolling. McCann is also the rank, ranked number six in the PSAC West in running back. McCann is on the sideline now to give him a little bit of rest. There's three receivers at the bottom, one at the top, and running back in the backfield. Ball snap, drop back pass for Black. A lot of pressure immediately, and sack by Seton Hill. Well, excuse me, not the Vulcans, but the Griffins seem to have luck with the extra pressure there. If I'm not mistaken, I've seen about five. Five men being sent. Black just not expecting it and didn't have anywhere to go. And that will be the end of the first quarter. No commercial break here. We'd actually like to take a moment and honor Devon Franklin. Devon Franklin is a two-time NCAA national champ in, uh, in track long distance, I believe. NCAA Woman of the Year candidate. She's also an eight-time NCAA All-American and a 15-time PSAC champion. So congratulations to her. Amazing athlete that she is on the field being honored by California. An amazing athlete, and I wish her luck in the rest of her athletic career. All those accomplishments I can her. No easy feat, and but she's done it. Props to her. She is. She's one of the most uh, amazing Cali athletes, especially um, especially in track. I've heard them mention her running in the 100 meter sprinters. Definitely a lot of competition. I remember running in track back in high school. It's a whole bunch of competition, just especially within the 100 meter dash alone. She's taking some pictures there on the field. As she walks off the field again, congratulations to Devon Franklin. California's offense now back out onto the field. Second quarter score is 20 to zero. California's been able to uh, continue a shutout through the first quarter. Seemed close there towards the end of it with the field goal being blocked by the special teams. California third in 18. Two receivers on the top of the screen. Drop back pass for Black. Looks like it's a screen pass out there. Wrapped up pretty quickly there. On the reception there, I can say a ca camera. That'll bring up a fourth down and 15. Fourth and for 15 the for the Vulcans as they bring out their punt team. So we wait the punt. Seton Hill back to receive. Punt is high snap, but gets the punt off. It's more of a direct kick directly to the to the returner and is they are wrapped up immediately. Looks like they'll be down at the 37 yard line. And we have former QB1 for your California Vulcans, Noah Mitchell, joining us uh, in the booth today. How are you doing, Noah? Hey, I'm doing good. You know, my grandfather always told me can't complain because nobody's going to listen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you join us today to announce a little bit of football. Uh, I yeah. imagine you have a, a good bit of knowledge about the California team. Oh, just a little bit. <laughs> I, mean, I only spent about five years here. 
Seton Hill ready to take over on the 28-yard line. Two receivers on the bottom, one on the top, running back in the backfield. Motion by the running back. Play action, uh, run up the middle, excuse me. California D-line able to wrap them up pretty quickly as there's actually a little bit of pushing going on. There, there's the whistle. To the 34-yard line. We've seen that play quite a few times already. Vulcans uh, giving up a few yards on each time. Second and four coming up for Seton Hill. Two receivers on the bottom of the screen, one on the top. Tied into the formation as well as one running back. Trying to catch California off guard, drop back pass. Looking down the middle and lit up immediately there. Jacob Siegel, man, he's he's been aware on that field. He's learned behind a lot of great guys. And then Coach Craig, um, the old defense coordinator, and now Coach Turner, I mean, he's soaking up all that knowledge, and that's why he's able to make that play on there. And there's now an injury timeout on the field. California, seem, uh, player for California, seems to be injured, cannot make out the number quite yeah, yet. I think it was Siegel. Siegel. Amazing play. Looks like he's pointing at his arm as he's able to get off the field on his own power. He seemed to get his forearm just in the wrong spot there. Yes, that is Jacob Siegel with the injury timeout. California already back out onto the field waiting for Seton Hill's offense to get back out on the field. It'll be first and 10 from the 39-yard line. One running back in formation, two on the bottom, one to the top. Tied in the formation on the close side of the field. Motion by the receiver on the far side going to the backfield for the handoff in California all over that one to get them back for a loss. No gain on the play for Seton Hill. Welcomes out defensive line again coming, coming through for this team. California playing some really good defense, especially on that front line by the defensive line, able to get to the quarterback pretty quickly and the running back. Run game not really in a lot of sync for Seton Hill. Some motion by the top receiver and the running back. Drop back pass for Seton Hill. Pressure coming from his backside. Rolling out, throwing the ball away. Interception by California as he takes it up the sideline looking for some blocks. He looks like he's going all the way, picking up some more blocks. All the way down, that looks like that is a touchdown, California. Keith Charney out there, he, I mean, he's, he's been a difference maker since he got into the program. I remember when he was a freshman, uh, me last year, and, and him being on scout team, always giving us a great look and making plays just like that on scout team. Amazing play there. California already up 20, 26 to 0 over Seton Hill. California just awaiting the kick. Looks like there is a flag on the play. Yeah, I think it's against Seton Hill, though. I've seen him talking to Coach Dunn. Just wanted to see where they want to take the flag, if they want to take an extra point or maybe on the kickoff. Block below the waist there on Seton Hill. Yeah, it's like Keith Charney. I mean, he's just one of those guys that's going to come into a program and work hard um, to, to get everything that he can. You know, I mean, he's one of the guys first in the on the field, first out. Same thing with the weight room. Just a really hard-working kid. Yeah, as well, one thing we can tell from these Vulcans is this bench runs deep. Definitely, you know, whether they're starting or not, it doesn't really seem to matter for this team at all. Yeah, and that's a lot of the credit to, to Coach Dunn. And Coach Dunn, every, every week we have a, what we call a young guns period, whereas the young guys, the freshmen, the sophomores, they get reps. Uh, everybody's ready to go when it comes Saturday. Pico now on the field for the kick. Kick is up, and the kick is good. The California Vulcans will take a 27-0 lead over the Seton Hill Griffins. We'll be back here on CETV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. 
A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Welcome back, everyone. California taking a 27-0 lead on homecoming uh, day, night, whatever time you're watching <laughs> from. I know some viewers back in Colorado. Shout out to everyone there uh, where I'm from, of course. Have to get a shameless plug to Colorado. I love it there. How often do you get to go back? Uh, once a semester. <laughs> <laughs> California getting ready to kick off the ball. Ball will be placed at the 50 for the kick after the penalty. Pico on for the kick. Kick team spreading out along the 45-yard line. And let's get straight back into it. Some more football. Ball is kicked, and it is going out of the end zone, bringing the ball out to the 25-yard line. Let's take a quick look at that pick six once again. Just looked like it was just behind the receiver. And then some amazing blocks picked up for a nice pick six. Keith Charney, I'd like to talk about him before, about his work ethic, but an amazing athlete. A lot of people don't know had offers to play basketball on the college level. And I don't care what level of um, college you're at playing basketball, only only real hoopers get an opportunity to play on the next level. Oh, for sure. There's a mascot, Blaze, counting up our points. His arms look like they're getting tired already with 27 <laughs> hits on that metal bar. Look at his swag walk as he goes away. Run up the middle. By Seton Hill. Looks like it's going to be a three yard gain for Seton Hill. Second and seven for the Seton Hill Griffins. Seton Hill with the drop back pass towards the inside of the field pass looks like it is complete enough for a Seton Hill first down as I said again said earlier and I'll say it again those both teams seem to be favoring the in, in, in and out routes kind of hard for defense to really cover if you're not really expecting it line doesn't really have enough time to get there and if your backs are a few yards off they're not really gonna have time to really recover up, run up the middle for Seton Hill. And I'd also like to mention there is a new quarterback in the game. Kofi Kwa in the game for Seton Hill. His first appearance of this game after uh, the pick six was thrown by Tesca. Yeah, and going back to what you were saying about the defense, is playing against Seton Hill for many years and playing practice against Cal. Um, those those slants and those ends are, are open a lot just because of how much both teams blitz. It's an opportunity to get the ball out of your hands really fast in an, in an area in the middle of the field where there's not many people. Drop back pass. A lot of pressure coming, but catch is secured. Looks like they'll make it a first down around to the 50-yard line. Seems like Vulcans that play decided to zone it up there. Just the outside just being wide. Seemed to be wide open. Outsides for both teams, playing very soft coverage on both of those. A lot of open passes just along the sidelines in general, either if it's from the slot or just from the outside. Yep. Two receivers to the top, one on the bottom, running back in the backfield, tight end on the close side of the field. Drop back pass. Some scrambling pressure pass. Looks like it was just flicked out of there in uh, effort to not come out with a sack, but incomplete pass there. Second and ten. California really seeming to bring a lot of pressure here on this quarterback coming into the game. Again, it is Qua 
in number 12 on the field. California not wanting him to get comfortable in that pocket. Yeah, yeah I was just about to say, coming in fresh um, off the sideline, play, play, playing against Cal, and you see on that play, the defense, the looks that he was getting wasn't really comfortable with it. That's why it didn't take much of a drop, just tried to tuck the ball and find somewhere to go. Drop back pass. Coming from the outside and is just wrapped up in the backfield. That is a sack for California. And blitz after blitz after blitz. Right now, Griffin's just not having an answer for it. Yeah, Dominic Solomon had a great week last week. That Coach, Coach Dunn credited one of his best weeks of his career. And, and, and he's an impact player there in that nickel formation. I mean, a lot of, a lot of plays get funneled to him. He's going to be the one to put up the stats and make a lot of plays on defense. It's now third and 20 for the Seton Hill Griffins. Drop back pass. A lot of pressure. Screen incomplete. I think they're going to get him for the late hit. Roughing the passer on that by Abe Sanago. Yeah. I don't believe that what that is. And that's roughing the passer. And that's going to be an automatic first down, which is <laughs> not really what you want. When if you're the defense, you want to get off the field to keep him fresh. Abe's motor is just so much like just going all the time that sometimes it makes it hard for him once he beats his offensive lineman to pull up there. Just got to have a little bit more discipline there, but he's he knows that he did wrong, and he's going he's gonna to make up for it later in the game for sure. Yeah. Just killer there, especially for the California defense, as that would have forced a fourth and 20, uh, assuming that they would punt to get the ball in some amazing field position. But it is now first and 10 from the California 44. Two receivers to the top of the screen, one to the bottom. It's a tight end in a running back. Hand off to the outside, cut back inside for a nice gain for the Seton Hill offense. Seton Hill offense really seems to be cutting a lot to the outside. California seeming to be there just to cut it back inside for around four, three to five yards each uh, rush attempt. I believe that was Josh Miller towards the top of the screen. You know, his job being that outside linebacker is to contain, force everything back inside. He did a great job on that one, funneling everything back towards his linebackers where Toby and, and Hutchison are flying around making plays. Now second and five for the Griffins. Drop back pass once again. Pressure coming in a nice low catch. California calling it down. And it is in, called incomplete. It's now third and five from the 39-yard line. Again, Vulcans putting some faith in their defensive backs there as they said had another blitz. Yeah, and if the quarterback would have had a little bit more time, maybe um, see the running back flying out into the flats, he could have caught it and got some yards, probably a first down. Third and five. The Griffins really needing a conversion, especially down with this amazing deficit of 27 to zero. Not what uh, Seton Hill especially was expecting coming into this game. Crowding the line, California. They send the pressure outside run by Seton Hill, but stopped for a minimal gain of around two yards. Third down is one of the scariest places to be against California because that's where Coach Turner really gets into deep in his playbook, deep in his bag, and, and pulling out blitzes that don't even make sense where they can come from. It's now fourth and four. It looks like they will keep the offense on the field really feeling like they need a first down and to get some points on the board before halftime. California on the far side seems to be giving some cushion, both sides of the field, excuse me, giving some cushion by the DBs. Drop back pass. And that is intercepted by California. Keith Charney with his second one. <laughs> My goodness, is this on top of the quarterback? He's just reading his eyes the whole way. Here's the replay of that play. Just honed it on his receiver from the start and read like a book. That's another interception. I believe that's the fourth of the game for California. And that's, that's tough for the quarterback there. He has to work the other side of the field because on that play, we got Dominic Solomon pushing out under number two, which gives Keith Charney the availability to push out under number one, just totally taking away that side of the field. California's offense now back on the field in pretty nice field position starting from the 35 yard line. First and 10, Vulcans.
bunch of two receivers set on the bottom, one on the top, fullback and a running back in the formation. Run to the outside. Run, cutting up. A lot of green. Can he break the tackle? No, he cannot. But it is a nice first down. Past the 50-yard line for the Vulcans. That is a Vulcans first down. I don't say this to demean McCann, but when your line is working up front like the Vulcans are right now, your backs just basically just have to find the hole, as he did there. Yeah, he does a great job at finding the hole and making the cuts inside. He does a good job at pressing his block so the defenders can't come off of the block early and make the tackle. He's just really good running back. First and 10 from the 47-yard line. Switching the side uh, for the running back. Running back up the middle. Just stopped for a round a two-yard gain. Excuse me, one-yard gain. Be second and nine from the 47 yard line. California's offensive line really had to give him some credit here. They created a lot of time in the pass game and some amazing holes there, except this time, Seton Hill really able to swarm the running back. Yep. Black communicating with the line. It is another outside run play. Except this time he is swarmed in the backfield. Backfield for a loss. I talked about Cal U's defense. Seton Hill's defense is very unique. It was always a, a rough week of, um, of install in, in preparing for this defense just because there can be six, seven people around the line of scrimmage at all times, and it seems like there's always somebody, um, once you pick them all up, there's someone shooting a gap to either make a sack or make a play in the backfield on a run game, as we've just seen there. From a former quarterback, what do you think is the strongest part of the Seton Hill defense? It's, it's, the, it's the front seven, um, the D linemen and the outside linebackers, and then what they do with their, with their walk-up guy who kind of covers up everything. But it allows them to do so much because you don't, you don't know where it's coming from. So when we play against Seton Hill a lot, we use a lot of a slide protection, using the back of protection a lot just because so many guys can drop, so many guys come. It's just easier to – slide the line one way and, and have the back protect off the backside. All right, and there was a flag on the play. It was a false start by California. It is now uh, third and 18. I think we're going to see a shot right here from Coach Salisbury on third and long. Seton Hill's corners backing up, knowing that the shot is coming. Three, so three receivers on the top, bottom, one on the top. Pressure coming out. Black looks like he will keep it for around a two-yard gain. From what I'm seeing there, just not Black not having a lot of time, and all the receivers covered there as it looked like Griffin's seemed to be in somewhat like a cover two. Yeah, when it's third and long like that, I mean the play has to develop, takes yep. much, so much longer for guys to get downfield. It's going to be hard to hold up in protection there. Yeah. California's punt team now on the field. Ball was placed at I believe that is the 45 yard line. Trying to pin Seton Hill deep on the far side of the field. Low, low snap. Able to get the kickoff. The ball will roll to inside the 10-yard line. Seton Hill will take it to around, I believe that is the 20, 21-yard line. So far, California has really been really dominant in both sides of the field, except for on that last drive there by California, getting very backed up there. Um, a lot of interceptions thrown by Seton Hill by both quarterbacks early in this game. We are still in the first half, and it is already 27-0. to zero. Seton Hill really needed to make something happen here to, uh, to get some points on the board. That's, it's that simple. Seton Hill on the field on the 22-yard line, first and 10. Drop back pass, screen pass, caught, going towards the, cutting towards the sideline, but California able to get there. Welcome defense there, picking that up early. I said, for me personally, it's not often that you see a wide receiver screen um, really work out as that play was a uh, gain about five yards, it's a decent gain, but Welcome's there picking that up early. Yeah, it's hard to execute those just because you're asking a wide receiver to block in, in a position that 
he's not. That's not his strength. You know, yeah. that's the offensive lineman's strength. His receiver strength is running routes, getting downfield, and catching the ball. Run play up the middle. No gain. It looks like. Gain of one. Excuse me. It is. It is now third and five. California looking to get another stop there. As you said earlier, Noah, things third down, weird. not where they want to be yeah. on Think, third down. Things are about to get weird. <laughs> Motion by the tight end, and now there is a flag on the play. Not sure what happened. I believe this might be a false start. Yep. Yeah, I was listening to a broadcast earlier, and you heard you're an official, so you probably see the game completely differently, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, usually I've I noticed I've been like the fallback guy, Jen, if they want to know a call. Yeah. Well. He's the brains uh, <laughs> back here. All that officiating smarts, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Sees the game from a different angle. That's what we like to see here at CUTV. Absolutely. It is now third and nine for Seton Hill. Empty uh, in the backfield. Going into the middle. The pass is incomplete. And there is a flag on the play. I'm going to say Siegel got there a little bit too early. Uh, it was really close, though. I mean, yeah. to see that in real time and make that um, to make that call is tough. Yeah, something like that is always a tough play to call. Then again, it's probably better to throw a flag and wave it off later than just not throw it and miss it altogether. Right. Uh, so we had a similar play down in IUP last week where we were sure the uh, defensive back there got this there just a tad early, but they ended up waving it off later. As they're still talking it over. Here's the call. Oh. It's a pass interference by Siegel. First down, Seton Hill. Looks like it'll be first down for Seton Hill on the 36-yard line. Two minutes, 45 seconds left to go in this first half. Motion by the running back to the other side. Run up the middle, cuts back to the outside, wrapped up for a loss. California's D-line, like you said, Noah, Really a strength of this California defense. Yeah, absolutely. And then even 58, they're getting held. On, you can see it on the replay yeah. and not getting called, but still able to keep his motor running, keep getting to the ball and making a play. Yeah. As I said, what's, what's sound of any great defense or any decent defense is the protection of the outside, as the Vulcans have done great, a great job at that so far. Yeah. Second and 14 now for the Griffins. Drop back, screen pass, and he is wrapped up for a nice little game there. Still behind the sticks, though. Will yeah, be third and ten. That's a great player, though, by BB. Um, a player who had a lot of potential last year as a freshman. Uh, had some health issues where he wasn't able to get out onto the field, but coming out this year and making an impact. Yeah. Next man up, always that mentality, get on the field, make a play. There he does there. Yeah, like y'all referenced earlier, I mean, just so deep at everywhere, especially on defense, that multiple guys can rotate in and make plays. Yeah. First, I say, as any sign of any great team, I sound like a broken record, is how deep your bench is. And when you can rely on those guys when your top guys are tired or when they're out, and that is this Vulcans team right here. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of Philadelphia – guys from Philly from um, go to Cal and you look at that championship team from a couple of years ago when they won the Super Bowl just the depth that they were able to rotate in and out with on that D line so that everybody stays fresh and nobody gets tired and can still make an impact on the offensive line who isn't rotating yep. 
Now, since you are a uh, former quarterback here, um, I honestly thought I was expecting to see a lot less passes today with this weather being as man. Then again, the rain isn't coming down as much as it was. But yeah. is there any reason, do you think, they were keeping it in the air so I think, frequent? I think um, just ba based off history, I mean, we do a good job of preparing for this. I mean, it, the forecast has said rain for a little bit now. Probably had some wet ball practices and working on throwing with it. But Davis is a talented quarterback with big enough hands that he can – grip the ball without any slippage, and then he's putting it on receivers where they're being focused in and making catches. Stop there. Minimal gain. Looks like a gain around two or three yards. And timeout for California. Noah, I've wanted to ask you this for a while. All right. How do you feel about your number back on field at quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm okay with it. I mean, it's – they tried to put me in um, number 15 right after Keir, Mike Keir graduated, and I said, uh, absolutely not. I'm not wearing number 15. It's time for me to build my own legacy. But if I have his number, it's his number. I've never been you know, that type of guy to be um, selfish about that. I'm glad he's doing phenomenal out here and wishing nothing but the best. I was, I was just wondering that because the first game I saw him, I'm like, hey, I'm not <laughs> Noah on the field. What happened? <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a great, great guy. I mean, I've got to know him a little bit. I came to spring ball last year. Um, I came out to the Edinburgh game a couple of weeks ago, and he, he comes up to me and goes, um, hey, Noah, this is how number five is supposed to look. So <laughs> he gives me crap about it, too. What, how do you feel if he breaks your records, though? I think he has a long way to go. <laughs> I think he has a long way to go. Well, that is the right answer, the diplomatic answer. <laughs> Fourth and seven. Punt team on the field. California back to receive. You know, they say records are meant to be broken. Um, but I wouldn't mind if mine, mine stood for a little bit. You know, <laughs> yeah. it makes you feel good. It's a motion coming from the punt team. Looks like it's a – no, he thought he was going to run. He ends up punting it. Looks like it is going deep, pinned at – oh, he's picked up and he's running with it to around the – 16, 17 yard line. Yeah, Coach Dunn is not going to be happy about that. <laughs> um, seen him flip his headset off, and he's he's ready to give uh, give Eric Willis a little bit of a word. Yeah, but they were shouting all shouting poison, but he picked it up anyway. But he's a playmaker, so yep. like at the same time, he'd be the type of player that would pick that ball up and, and take it for ninety plus yards for a touchdown. Yeah. Definitely didn't want to get pinned deep back in their in their own ten. Took the ball for a little bit of a gain there, more field position to work with. Can never be real mad about that. No, and Coach Dunn was calling those timeouts because he wanted an opportunity for the offense to go to score. So Eric Willis, to an extent, just matching that same amount of aggressiveness. Right. Minute 36 left to go in this half. California leading 27-0. to zero. Drop back pass for Black. Going deep. Just perfectly layered in there. Yeah, that was a great job there by Eric Willis and David Black to both identify that cover two there. Uh, Eric Willis gets wide, slows down, so he doesn't run into the safety, and David Black uh, throws a bullet right in there. Yeah, now, now tell me if I'm wrong, but I've noticed the difference between playing against zone and man. And zone, you have to f wait for the right spot to be open, and man, you just have to find the right man. Yeah. There we go there with a little bit of, I believe that was zone. Just fitting it right in between the two corners. That's what zones, uh, zone has always been easier for me because it, it – gives you a definitive read. You know who you're reading on the play. Um, once he goes a certain way, you're going to throw away from where he goes. Yep. Man, you're always – got to make sure the receiver wins, um, and then you got to put a ball on a spot that's different than what zone coverage uh, indicates. California was a consecutive first down there, both passes by Black. California making Seton Hill's defense just miss. Black communicating – with the offensive line and the running back. Drop back pass to the outside. It is caught. Ten eleven to go. Clock is running. Ball is snap. Drop back pass for Black. And he just throws it away. Receiver in the area, though. Yeah, no flag. So that's why I said that this defense is Bring some issues, and when you're in a hurry-up tempo, you're not able to communicate as much on the offensive line, so some things can go wrong. Black being smart about throwing it to where a receiver was in the area so it doesn't get no penalty for intentional grounding. Yeah. 
communication with the sideline. Third and six. Pass from Black. Pressure coming from the side. He's wrapped up. He's out of it, though. Trying to make something of it. And he just takes it. Stays in bounds for a nice little gain. Clock is rolling. 48 seconds. Looks like there was a timeout. No, excuse me. First down. Great heads up play there by Black. Just to be shoot even get out of the pocket there and just Gain the first down. Yeah, he's a good athlete. Next up there, you just want to see him be able to get out of bounds and, and stop that clock. But getting that first down gave him the, the, the clock stoppage anyway. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. Trying to add a little bit more points to this lead. Drop back pass. Going deep down the middle. And that is going in for a California touchdown. That is Amari Hopkins. Once again, Amari Hopkins been an elite player here for the California Vulcans in the first half. Black is just dangerous when he has the time to throw as he did there. Now, one thing I've noticed from him, his, uh, that ball wasn't as deep, but he has an accurate deep ball. He put it right on the spot there and right where it needed to be. And he, he's very confident, you know what I mean? He's confident in his arm. He doesn't think too much about, oh, what if this happens? He, he's confident in his ability to put the ball in tight windows. And him and Amari have a, a great connection that they worked on all summer. And you see it on display on passes like that. Biko on for the kick. Ball is up, and it is it is good. We'll be back here in a moment on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Welcome back, everyone. We just saw Amari Hopkins with a nice touchdown to take a 34-0 to zero lead in the second quarter. There's only 38, 36 seconds left to go. See what Seton Hill can do, if, if anything, in that, nice, in that time. Yeah, no, and as you mentioned, that can, uh, Black to Amari Hopkins connection, that, uh, that um, relationship between players is just as important on the field as it is off the field if you want these teams to perform. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I think that, Player or fans that watched the, the team last year seen that with me and Jaquay Jackson. I mean, we were just on the same page. We put in a lot of work, though, to get there. It doesn't just come, um, just doesn't come out of nowhere. You got to work for it. Here's the kick. Not too deep. Feel the inbounds to run some of that clock off as he cuts back towards the middle, but is swarmed by California. 33 seconds left to go. Let's take a quick look at that touchdown by Black and Hopkins. Yeah, this is, this is just four verts right here. Uh, Gary Smith's favorite play. You got <laughs> one high safety there, so we're going to work the pipes just opposite of, of whatever seam that the, the safety decided to take. Blaze seems like he's tired of hitting the hammer, so he's letting everyone else get a chance at it there. California spectators and band and everyone else around just having some fun here with a 34-0 lead over Seton Hill. Pounding away at that metal bar. And there we go. I understand why Blaze want to give it up. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing Hill back on the field. Ball snapped. Drop back pass. A screen pass. Running out of bounds. Running the clock. Being smart there. He's second and eight. Seeing Hill still having all three timeouts. Wouldn't be surprised. See at least three shots down the field. Now you have two options generally, at least two that come to mind, either quick passes and going out of bounds or sending it deep or calling using your timeouts as 
Griffins decide just to use the sidelines there. Some deep routes going up. California is trying to get to the quarterback. It looks like he will run for it. And it is just lit up. Looks like in the stomach. Timeout Seton Hill. California had really good defense there. So every, uh, Seton Hill sending everyone deep. Uh, covered very nice. You can see there. Just takes off running for it. Just gets lit up. Yeah, generally, every anytime you get the quarterback to run out of the pocket, and that's not generally a strong suit, is a good day. But generally, you just want someone there to uh, tackle him as Khalil, Khalil, Khalil Taylor was able to make that play there. And now in practice during the week, you're not allowed to hit the quarterback on any team. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so guys love that opportunity um, in game especially. I mean, like you said, you don't get to touch them all week. We're in a different color, and then you come game time where everybody's in the same color, you mean – might as oh. well get a hit in. Oh. Especially if it's someone else's team. You don't want to hit your friend. You want to hit your <laughs> opponent. You want to no. hit your enemy. I tell you, though, there's, there's a couple of times in practice where you get that accidental hit. and <laughs> I feel like those ones hurt more because you're not <laughs> expecting it to come. You know, you're not oh. supposed to be getting hit. Oh. Seton Hill back out onto the field as, as is California after that timeout. 17 seconds left. Third and one. Welcome seem to have a three down three down line with a floating backer. Ball a snapped run up the middle. Seems like they just want to get out of this half alive. The yeah, biggest thing right now for Seton Hill is just trying to get some momentum going into halftime to feel like you're still in this game. Yeah. There was a timeout taken by Seton Hill. You want to be able to go into halftime saying saying something positive to your team and, and, and giving something to build off of going into the second half. Definitely. There's 13 seconds left to go in this second quarter. 34 to 0. And right now in this point of the game, Vulcan's not really worried or covering about covering anything up short. It's looking to prevent any touchdown or getting them in within field goal range to prevent any score here. I don't think I've ever seen a mascot wear a poncho before. That's different. <laughs> Blaine, Blaine's the god of fire. Not not big of a fan of water, it looks like. <laughs> but luckily for California, the Vulcans, their flame is burning bright in this game so far. Yeah. And there he is jumping up and down with the cheerleaders. Remember this game two years ago um, at Cal, pretty similar situation. Jumped out to a 21, 20 point, 28 point lead in the first quarter. Um, and, and those just... They really do a damage to the other teams mentally, you know. When you get yeah. down that fast so early, it just makes it hard to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the especially besides if you have a good team, it does, does just doesn't matter if your yeah. team is also not mentally equipped. Right. Still raining here in California. First and 10, 13 seconds left to go for the Griffins. California playing very deep uh, on those DBs to prevent, it looks like. Don't want no big plays to happen out of nowhere. Drop back pass. Cutting on the inside by the receivers. Taking the ball. There is a flag on the play. Flag with six seconds left to go here in this game. Yeah, it definitely looks like a hold there as it is. If your coach done, you're just ready to get out of this rain right for a little bit, go into halftime, get dry, and all these flags, timeouts, it just keeps extending this half. Yes, California ma definitely made their mark on this first half of the game. They want to get out of here, re rejuvenate a little bit. Look at all that rain just coming down here. <laughs> no one wants to be standing out in this rain. You may have a helmet on, but no, your arms, you're cold. They got to be. <laughs> I'm not sure. Some guys seem to thrive in this weather. Yeah. I, I wasn't one of them. But <laughs> <laughs> I tried to wear sleeves. Um, in high school, and you find out in these rain games, um, especially being a quarterback, the sleeves soak up so much water, yep. um, makes your arms so much heavier, and sometimes make it harder to throw the football. Yep. Holding on the offense, number 28. <laughs> There'll be the last timeout Seton Hill takes. Six seconds, needing to take a shot, uh, assuming that's why they're taking the timeout. 
but one more chance to get some points on the board. Don't want to be shut out in the half. Yeah, six seconds left. Not too many options here. I'd imagine they'd send it deep, but have a whole bunch of uh, last play. Falcons were in cover three. I'd imagine they'd send just as many or maybe even more back just to present, prevent the long play. Here's another look at the PSAC schedule for today. Seton Hill, California. That's us, of course. Mercyhurst versus Clarion. Slippery Rock versus Gannon. Claire, uh, sorry, excuse me. Edinburgh, IUP. East Stroudsburg, Westchester. Shippensburg, Cookstown. Um, Lock Haven, Bloomsburg, Shepherd, Millersville. A lot of good games happened today. A uh, team to watch, I definitely, in my opinion, has, would have to be Slippery Rock. I sound like a bandwagon, but Slippery Rock just um, on top of the PSA with. PSAC West have yet to actually see them in action, but just from everything, all the stats we've seen, they've just been dominant. Yeah, they're, they're scary year in and year out. Like I was just talking to somebody, once you have that much success on a national level, it makes recruiting so much easier. Oh, yeah. First and 19. Draw play, running to the outside. Can he get out of bounds in time? Yes, he can he. Looks like they may decide to put the time back, as I believe the referees. Yep. There's one second left to go. <laughs> Some complaining coming from everyone in the stands. Some boos coming from uh, from the California side. No one wants to stand out here for another second, literally. <laughs> 34 to 0, Vulcans. California, it's on the sideline, just bunched up, ready to get out of here. As they were already making their way off the field. Also see our good friend Nate Kurtz on the sideline there, having some fun, talk, taking some pictures of the team. Deep pass coming, and he is sacked. California making a statement as they end this half. 34 to zero, Noah. I mean, yeah, Noah, <laughs> thank you for uh, joining us during the second quarter. Thank uh, you guys for welcoming me into the booth. Um, yeah. Thank you to Gary. This has always been something I wanted to do. Coach Dunn would unfortunately never let me. Um, <laughs> we proposed the option of doing Friday night um, football games, and he just wasn't with it. So this has always been a dream for me. Um, obviously, this is my passion. So thank you guys for um, giving me the time to come in here and yeah. talk with y'all. Oh yeah, for sure. Thank you for coming. Of course, thank you. And that is the half, 34-0. to zero. California in the lead. We'll be right back on CTV, CTV Sports 1, and the PSAC Network. Are you a Penn West California student looking to get involved in media? You have two great choices, and for both, all majors are welcome. CUTV is the home for Vulcan Sports. Be a part of 80-plus live games both home and on the road. We're looking for announcers, camera operators, graphic operators, and much more. There are also opportunities to develop your own shows. Go to our YouTube page, CUTV Sports 1, and see all of the content. WCAL Radio gives you the opportunity to play your music and develop your own show. Be heard locally over the air in a 40-mile radius and worldwide online. That's 91.9 FM, Power 92. SAI Media of CUTV and WCAL. Get out, join up, be seen, and be heard. Welcome back. It is halftime here at Addison Stadium. It is our homecoming, though, so I'd like to welcome you back as you guys can take a look at all the homecoming festivities coming on during halftime.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of students, faculty, staff, and administration of Penn West California, I welcome you to Homecoming 2023. I hope this homecoming has brought back fond memories for our many students, guests, friends, and di dignitaries who are with us today. As part of the celebration, California students have been campaigning for the title of Homecoming King and Queen. Many thanks to all of our homecoming court candidates this year. I will now announce our homecoming court. First, a senior graphic design major from Eastern Pennsylvania, Sebastian Ramos. Sebastian is sponsored by Sigma Tau Gamma, Phi Sigma Sigma, Alpha Sigma Alpha, Sigma Kappa, Studio 224, Screen Printing, Student Association, and Peer Mentoring. Next up, senior psychology major from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Elizabeth Shelley. Beth is sponsored by Sigma Kappa, Sigma Ta Gamma, Phi Sigma Sigma, Kappa Kappa Psi, and Gamma Sigma Sigma. Next is senior English journalism major from Gibbon Glade, Pennsylvania, Jonathan Sakaguchi. Jonathan is sponsored by CUTV, WCAL, Cal Times, Society of Professional Journalists, University Choir, DECA, and Vulcan Gaming Club. Next is senior marketing major from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Bria Allen. Bria is sponsored by Black Student Union, Vulcan Baseball Club, Rugby, Football, Women United, Men United, African American Alumni Society, and the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Next up is senior communication studies major from Duncansville, PA, Derek Harshberger. Derek is sponsored by Student Government Association, Phi Gamma Delta, Rainbow Alliance, Student Activities Board, University Honors Program, Commuter Council, The Underground, Gamma Sigma Sigma, Athletic Promotions, and Alpha Lambda Delta. Next is senior criminal justice major from Philadelphia, PA, Sierra Everett. Sierra is sponsored by Alpha Sigma Alpha, Vulcan Gaming Club, Women's Tennis, Student Activities Board, Student Government, The Underground, Rainbow Alliance, and Cosplay Club. Next is senior mechatronics engineering major from Essex, Maryland, Gavin Wingard. Gavin sponsored by club baseball, hockey club, forensics club, Alpha Sigma Alpha, Phi Sigma Sigma, Alpha Sigma Ta, Delta Zeta, and women's soccer. Next is senior communication sciences and disorder major from Carmichael's PA, Taylor Christopher. Taylor is sponsored by Acacia, Alpha Kappa Lambda, Men's Rugby Club, Hockey Club, Vulcans Football, and Delta Zeta. Next is Junior Secondary Education Social Studies major from Ritchieville, PA, Jonathan Sate. Jonathan is sponsored by CUTV, WCAL, and Cal Times.
and last senior business administration management and management information systems major from Centerville, PA, Sarah Cedar. Sarah is sponsored by Cal Times, CUTV, and WCAL, New Life, Stand, Women United, Women's Volleyball, Geology Club, BEI Office, SAB, BECA, ALD, Honors, SHAB, Peer Mentoring, Student Government, SAI, Vulcan Gaming, and Vulcan Drones. Joining Tony Morrow on the field is student government representative Olivia Gans, along with 2022 homecoming queen Haley Lucas and the 2022 homecoming king Wade Wolfgang. And now, please help me in congratulating this year's homecoming king, Derek Horsberger. Congratulations to the 2023 homecoming queen, Sarah Cedar. One more big round of applause for your 2023 homecoming king, Derek Harshberger, and 2023 homecoming queen, Sarah Cedar. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the field the Channel 20 Vulcans Marching Band. Yelena and Tristan, is your band ready?
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adamson Stadium. It, the, we just ended a halftime. The score is 34 to 0 with the California Vulcans with an amazing lead. It's me and Braxton on the call. Noah Mitchell did join us. Uh, former QB1 for your California Vulcans did join us for the second quarter. He is back down on the field uh, chatting up with the friends. We just did our homecoming festivities. Uh, congratulations to Derek Harshberger and Sarah Cedar for being crowned king and queen. And actually, we now have uh, the president of CUTV, John Sape, in the booth with us now as he steals my french fries. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is, uh, made homecoming court. We are very proud of him. Uh, and now, we're ready to get pl to play some more football. Lock it down here uh, during homecoming. Give you a little bit of a rundown uh, through first, through, through halftime, excuse me. Uh, first downs, uh, California with 12 uh, in Seton Hill with 10. Uh, California also, just a lot of scoring, of course, with the shutout so far. And we got a little shot of uh, King and Queen there, Derek and Sarah Cedar. All of the court just lined up on the field. Exciting time <laughs> for everyone involved. Look at there, Sarah Cedar and President John Sape. I was on the sideline like, hey, John was just standing there by himself now. <laughs> <laughs> and there are the two together on the field with the former king and queen from last year. And here we go. Get ready to kick off this second half of Vulcan football. As Gary Smith takes one of my french fries. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> California getting ready to set to kick off. Ball is boomed towards Seton Hill. Caught at the, f oh, muffed there at the three yard line, but is able to make some positive gain out of it, getting it to around the 22 yard line as we get ready to continue here on homecoming night. Yeah, this game interesting so far on the Vulcans and just Vulcans firing on all cylinders. Doing their jobs and when that's all you're really required to do. So far for Seton Hill, there have been two quarterbacks that have been rotated in, uh, Tesca and Qua in the game. Both, uh, no touchdown passes, no points scored, of course, in the first half for the team. And here we go, with the first snap. Pass is just flooded. It looked like it was designed to be a draw, QB draw, but no one was biting on the pass there. Corners had receivers just locked up. That was an amazing sack by California. Man, I kind of missed what happened with how quick all the Vulcans kind of crashed in there. Quarterback just nowhere to go. Now second and 13 for the Griffin. Two receivers on the top, one on the bottom. Handoff going in the middle, getting hit around a gain of three or four there for the Griffins. Notice the Griffins' offense is uh, mainly just based off of play action or fakes or options generally there, as I can't see. I've seen the quarterback run the ball so far in this game. Don't believe we have based off these stats. Maybe once, <laughs> I don't know, especially a scramble. What? There was one scramble by each quarterback, actually, as they were flooded in the pocket. Hmm. Drop back pass. Rain has picked up in the second half, and there's a dart towards the ground. Was it caught? And it was incomplete. And just as he said that, the water at Rain has picked up, and it definitely has, making this field a little bit slick. I believe that was number 10 on the Griffins. He just kind of lost his footing there. That Rain is not too forgiving on this, especially on this turf field like this. That's definite. The turf and the rain, it seems everything gets mashed down. Doesn't seem like it's grass, more of a slick rink out there, like a little slip and slide. Oh yeah. You can even see, look at that rain there. Even on the field you can see like just the light reflecting off the rain. <laughs> really definitely not the best conditions to be in, especially if you're facing a deficit now. Oh yeah. And there is a punt coming from Seen Hill. 
high in the air, and there is flags as California ran into the kicker. The ball goes out of bounds. Flag on the play. I believe this will be a roughing the kicker. I'm not sure if they'll call it roughing or running into running into Leeson High School is a five yard penalty. Roughing, roughing the kicker is a fifteen yard penalty and an automatic first down. I guess we'll see what they decide to go with. I'm assuming they'll just keep it to uh, running the kicker here. The kicker limping onto the sideline for Seton Hill. Never really a good sign. Roughing. Yep, so they decide to go with roughing the kicker. Here, that's an auto 15 yard penalty, of course. That's an automatic first down. Giving the ball, keeping the ball in the hands of Seton Hill. California, give him a quick three and out, but instead of a three and out, we're back on the play. Ball's being moved all the way up to, I believe, the 38 yard line. First and 10, the Griffins. There's the snap as it ran to the outside California there to swarm the ball carrier. Beginning of, I believe, two yards. Wilkins line and backers doing a great job up front of recognizing that play early, only keeping it to about a gain of about two yards. Not the first time that I said, and of course, that's we've seen that play quite a few times in the defense, I'm guessing, is picking on up just as quick. Definitely. California seem to have just have an answer for everything Seton Hill is throwing at him, no matter how far down the field they get. Ooh, a little bit of a juggled uh, snap there as the quarterback takes off the runs. Actually, he throws it. He is going down the sideline, far side of the field. 10, 5, touchdown. That is the first touchdown for the Seton Hill Griffins. Looks like it was a 60-yard touchdown. Tesco with a great find there, just kind of Flushed out of the pocket, able to flip it right to the open receiver. No one quite back yet to protect. Uh, kind of slipped as that wet turf got him. <laughs> the turf monster is in this rain is no friend. And just wide open for the touchdown. That throw looked like it was all in the wrist. Like, literally, look at the flick of his wrist yeah. going on that throw. <laughs> You're that close. You almost have, don't really have to put much on it as he did not there. Just got it to his man as he should have. And great play there for the Seton Hill Griffins there for that touchdown. Connor to attempt the kick. It's a fake. It is going in for two points. That is a two-point conversion. Good by Seton Hill. Score is 34-8. to eight. Seton Hill gets their first points of the game. We'll be back here on CU TV Sports and the PSAC Network. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepard. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Hello and welcome back to Adamson Stadium as the Seton Hill Griffins get on the board with a nice 60-yard touchdown and then a two-point conversion on a fake PAT. Score is 34-8. Vulcans ready to receive is me, Braxton, and now we got your voice of Vulcan Sports, John Safe, in the booth with us. How are you doing, John? Oh, it feels great. I'm back and I'm wet and I'm <laughs> ready to watch the rest of this football game. All right, and the kick goes into the end zone. California will take the kick on the 25-yard line. Here's a both of us. I can show off Sarah. my uh, We're my gonna cat show one of the home, the homecoming queen herself. This is Sarah Cedar. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> Sarah. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> California, get ready to take over now on the 20 yard line, 25 yard line. Excuse me. I held the umbrella for her to make sure she didn't get wet. So <laughs> <laughs> I took the brunt of it. T you gotta keep it the queen happy. I mean, it was worth it, you know. I mean, she ended up winning, so <laughs> better, better her yourself. than I. <laughs> 
California on the field now. In the gun, two receivers to each side, running back in the backfield with Davis Black. Motion coming from the receiver. It is a play action pass deep, going deep to Eric Willis at third. It is over. Shots incomplete. Davis Black there. Kind of had, had time in the pocket. He's normally, uh, so far on those deep routes, has just been money. Just there, just out of the reach, and just out of the way for receiver Willis there. I mean, I mean we saw them score in the play. That I think it was the same exact play on the first play of the game, and so we I mean, know Black is able to make that throw. I think the weather may be a little bit uh, affecting some of these uh, some of these balls, Don. Definitely, oh, yeah. the weather did come down, especially during halftime. Uh, just seemed to pick up. Did not want anyone to have no fun. Absolutely not, because why would it? Exactly, <laughs> it's California. Second and 10 for the Vulcans. Run to the outside and is just swarmed. Actually, yes, he is swarmed up in the backfield. Tackled for loss. It'll be third and 12. I mean, that is one thing, though, about these uh, Vulcan running backs is that they do a great job at uh, kind of making something out of nothing. McCann got hit maybe five, six yards in the backfield, was able to bounce off of one tackle. Still ended up being a loss, but he was still able to recover a little bit of ground. Mm. California, all their running backs, they have so many that they're just amazing at utilizing, all having different strikes, but all being able to just go crazy once they get the ball. Pass to the far side of the field is dropped incomplete, bringing up a fourth down, fourth and 13 on the Seton Hill side of the ball. California's punt team now coming onto the field. Man, I'm start, really starting to feel like this uh, weather here is starting to really come into effect. My ball is starting to get a little bit more slick. A couple short passes, just incomplete in the dirt, in the turf, excuse me. Just not really able for the receivers to really get to. Seton Hill ready to receive the kick. It is booted away far into the rainy sky. No fair catch. It was touched by touched by Seton Hill. Bounce off of him. California recovers. There is a flag on the play. Yeah, I think they're gonna get Dominic Solomon Jr. Yeah. on that on the hit. But yeah, I think we're looking at the replay a little bit. I think he may have gotten hit just before the ball would have reached him. But if you're seeing now and, and the the receiver of that punt. Looks surprised like you didn't signal for a fair catch. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, it looks like the signal here is going to be should be kick, -catch, kick catching interference. There, kind of a scrum. Qu uh, couldn't at least from up here, couldn't quite see what ha really happened. Gotta love the rainy windows here in the press box. <laughs> Dean Hill will retain possession as uh, contact came before the ball was caught. First down, Seton Hill. So that has 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. And if you're Seton Hill after that last offensive drive, you're able to get into the end zone. It puts you in a very good spot with the field position, gives you the ball, looks like right at midfield. So you get the ball right after scoring a touchdown and getting a big stop. And oh yeah. it's time for you, uh, you and the Seton Hill offense to build a little bit more momentum. Seton Hill, first and 10 from the 49, it looks like. Moving the running back to the other side of the field. Play action, rolling out, running, scrambling. Tipped. California looking to get the pick there, unsuccessful there. California has gotten very lucky with the amount of picks. I believe Seton Hill's thrown four just in the first half alone. Yeah, defensive backs are having themselves a, having themselves a ga uh, game today as we have Qua back in. Flush out of that pocket early. Just had to get it out as quick as he could. Just out of the hands of the receiver there. is now second and 10 from the 49 yard line. Three receivers to the top of the screen, one to the bottom, run up the middle for about a six or seven yard gain. Seton Hill really seemed to be relying a lot on this run game. Run game not picking up in the first half, but 
seems like they really want to lean on it a lot more as they were facing a 34 to zero deficit with some amazing passes just on that last drive alone giving them that touchdown yeah. it seems a bit counterintuitive though because it's like when you want to start the game you want to establish the run get it going but whenever you find yourself in a hole so quickly it's so early on in the game you have to throw the ball you have to get it out there and obviously in that first half didn't uh, bear them a lot of success but now they're able to do something here. Drop back pass, stepping up in the pocket, getting swarmed by the D-line. That is a sack credited to California. And it's Ibe Sanago again. So we can take a look at the replay. He's just an absolute freak of nature on that defensive line. Just watch him just shove off that left tackle for Seton Hill and then step up and just wrap up and throw him down. Yeah, Sanago with a great, a great vision, able to read the quarterback, and he was able to shed his block and get there just in time. Fourth and six, the offense stays on the field. See what they can do here. If not, they put the Vulcans in a good field position. Communication with the sideline to get the play call. And there's a delay of game flag. I don't know, I don't see a ref might have probably had the timeout before that. You called it timeout. Seton Hill doesn't want to give up any more field position, looks like. They just wanted the clock to run out a little bit, see what California was giving them. Yep. California not giving them what they wanted. Yeah, Vulcans right now just seem to be uh, floating. <laughs> like my fries <laughs> uh, on <laughs> by Gary Smith. Definitely going to munch on that. Hey, man, you didn't really get a lot of time to eat. I saw you running back. You're like, all right, I got two minutes to get back up. And I saw you eating and trying to get your way back up to the press box. Eating in the elevator on the way back up here. So I'm going <laughs> to take, take a little bite of this fry roll. Uh, yeah, Vulcans right now. Defense, uh, this right now seem to be floating in between like a nickel and a dime right now. They seem to have that uh, outside linebacker you know, on either side um, blitzing or floating in and, out, in and out as he pleases right now. And I believe that's what um, is throwing a little bit of a um, – the Griffin's off right now. I want to thank Gary Smith for giving me a fry there. <laughs> I also would like to thank, oh wait a second, everyone that came out to today's game. I mean, it is uh, not great weather, so everyone that showed out here today for both Seton Hill and California, thank you very much for attending. Everyone out in the parking lot tailgating still, thank you for uh, making the trip here and led to a pretty good environment here for, uh, for today's homecoming game. Drop back pass. They are going for it on fourth down. Scramble up the middle. California seems they get there in time. That is a change. That is a change in position on downs. It'll be first and ten for California. Yeah, and if you take a look at the replay, the Vulcans do such a good job at just penetrating the pocket and just forcing any quarterback to try to make one of those quick decisions. In that time, uh, they tried to step up. Uh, and the Vulcans were right there swarming, just able to bring them down and, like you said, able to flip the possession back in their favor and maybe try to stop any momentum that Seton Hill may have been trying to pile on. Most definitely. California with the ball. It's a play-action pass running towards the sideline and a dart out of bounds. It will be second and ten. Griffin's there in man coverage. Black just not really finding anyone, just with enough separation, at least enough we would like to throw it to. And just throwing it away there, which was a smart play. Glad you didn't lose your uh, debit card there. <laughs> <laughs> Far out of my pocket. California communicating with their sideline. Two, rece two receivers at the top of the screen, one at the bottom, a tight end and a running back in the formation as well. Motion by the running back to the other side. Drop back pass for Black. Dart to the middle of the field. Field, amazing yards after catch there to around the 40-yard line. First down, California. And that's Amari Hopkins again. And Black just so accurate, doesn't even care about just the, this rain and everything. Just like you said, zips it right in there. Hopkins just had that space in between the linebacker and the corner and able to not only make the catch but hold on to it as a, like you said, as he's slipping around, everyone's just trying to bring him down as well. Yeah, and that's. From least from today's game, and pretty sure what we've seen in the season, um, Eric Willis and Amari Hopkins definitely being the top two favorite receivers for Black, and their connection has just been on point as of this season. First and ten for the Vulcans. Run up the middle, making some people miss. 
McCann with the carry there. In just short of a first, just short of the first down. Amazing moves there. Yeah, and that's just an excellent open field tackle by Seton Hill because of McCann is able to break off of that one. He's running an extra 32 yards into the end zone, but great tackling by Seton Hill. Uh, only holds it to a nine-yard gain, and I think McCann and the Vulcans may be a little bit upset that that one wasn't a bit more. Yeah, this ran especially is making it just a bit harder to really break down and gather yourself. Run up the middle. Looks like he is stuffed at the line, and he is pushed far back. Of course, forward progression. Again, I believe it would be third and one. Now McCann there. Just no, nowhere to really go, but McCann, McCann with enough presence of mind and enough strength to at least get back to the line of scrimmage. As that's what you want there. Yeah, someone had a very that was a goofy. Uh, that was a goofy horn. Goofy horn. Yeah. <laughs> California back on the line. They have one heavy set. It looks like. Run up the middle, and he is stuffed at the line. And there's a flag on the play. So let's see, Hassan. Looks like he's going to be holding on the offense. Yep. It's kind of a different position to put the coach in as fourth and one. The Vulcans might go for it anyway and get that yard. They decline the penalty, bringing up fourth down, fourth and one for the Vulcans. Looks like the uh, California seems to keep their offense on the field, having trust in their offense to get the first down here. Yeah, it looks like they lost a few yards on that run, so it's going to be about a fourth and three. And if you're seeing how, I think maybe a smart thing, you don't want to take the 10-yard penalty and give uh, the Vulcans two, tran uh, two chances to get the first down. So... Only one to get the fourth and three. Drop that pass for Black. Black darting it to the middle of the field, incomplete. And that is a turnover on down. Seton Hill will take over at the 34-yard line. Yeah, great coverage there by Seton Hill, at least especially to get his arms on Amari Hopkins there and get that out of his arms. Great defense. And like you talked about, Hopkins and, and Willis this season have been the star receivers for the Vulcans. Willis in this game, four catches, 129 yards and a touchdown. And Amari Hopkins, four receptions for 110 yards and two touchdowns. So those two have just been all over the place in this game for California. Look at that rain still coming down out here in California, Pennsylvania, of course, not the real California. This is the better <laughs> one, I like to say. The OG one. The OG yep. California. We were here first. First down for the Griffins. Bounces the outside, wrapped up for... Minimal game to no gain there. Looks like it'd be no gain. Yeah, and the timing on that play just got thrown off immediately because the snap was a bit high. It just took a minute for everyone to collect it, calm down, and make the handoff. But we, we always learn, like, just that one split second is the difference between a hole being open and a hole being closed in that time. Uh, it's just a bit too late. Second and ten for the Griffins. Drop back pass. Pressure and looks like he is taken down for about two, one yard gain. It'll be third and nine coming up for the Griffins. Now your pressure on your defensive line doesn't mean anything if your QB scrambles and he just gains as many yards as he pleases there. Vulcans have done a great job so far of their backers coming up when needed to, especially having the uh, wherewithal and the presence of mind to really come once the quarterback breaks that uh, line of scrimmage. Noah Mitchell said earlier during the uh, second quarter, third down, not a place you want to see. Coach loves to dial up some goofy blitzes, as he said. See what happens. Four-man rush. Incomplete. That's an interception by California. 31 with the pick. That's his third on the day. Amazing play there. Yeah, Keith Charney with another one. He had one last week. <laughs> Three of them today, and... I mean, none easier than look at the throw just straight to him. 
out of Tesca's arm. It was just all over the place. But I mean, early, already very early and likely candidate for uh, next week's uh, uh, PSAC Defensive Athlete of the Week, Keith Charney, with three picks already. Yeah, California now. Oh, sorry, uh, not often you get one reception in a game, but three I can't say I've ever seen. Keith Charney having himself a game and and one for a touchdown too. Oh yeah. These quarterbacks don't even know what to do. It seems like there's been now four interceptions in this game. Let's see if the trend continues. Uh, as California's def sec secondary specifically has been on point. It's now first down for the Vulcans from the 25-yard line. Bunch set at the top of the screen, and it is a run by Black. Quarterback keep for a minimal gain. Black not afraid to take some hits. Looks like he, he welcomes the contact. Uh, Black not afraid, as he said, to really scramble when he needs to. Not too uh, flat-footed for position of a quarterback. You have some quarterbacks who specialize in staying in the pocket. Black able to get you the extra yardage when needed. Definitely more of an improvising quarterback, if you ask me. Bunch set at the top, or a stack, excuse me. One receiver on the bottom. Motion by Willis to the outside. And he's going slot fade for a touchdown. I believe that is Amari Hopkins with his third touchdown of the game. Just another play dialed up beautifully. I mean, what else can you expect? When you have two receivers like that on the same side, you got to pick your poison, and they decide to play Willis extra, extra aggressively, and that just leaves Hopkins, who's able to just float in behind the defense, and perfect route, perfect ball by Black, just able to find him right on the money in stride, and like he said, that's the third touchdown of the day for Amari Hopkins. Definitely doesn't seem to be slowing down. PAT awaiting now. Biko on for the kick. Kick is up. Kick is good. California takes a 41-8 to lead over the Seton Hill Griffins. We'll be back here on CUTV Sports 1, the PSA Seton Network, and 91.9 FM WCAL. Vulcan Volleyball is back, and you can have the best seat in the house. The Convocation Center will be rocking with 11 home games featuring some of the best teams in the region and the PSAC. All home games will be streamed live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans on all social media platforms for up-to-date schedules and information. Vulcan Volleyball and you, a winning combination. Hello and welcome back, California. 41 to 8 here in the second half. 4.45 left to go. Hopkins with an amazing touchdown there thrown by Black. His third of the day. California getting ready to kick off. And here we go. Kick is in the air through the rainy sky. Fielded around the four yard line, taking it. Running it, cutting it upside in the middle, cutting it back outside, making people miss. Looks like he takes it past the 25-yard line to around the 26, 27-yard line. Now, one thing I would like to point out this uh, um, is earlier this week, me and the station producer, Gary Smith, have played a uh, board, board slash card game, uh, fast drive football, where we uh, simulated this game. And the final score we had was 62-14. Now, of course, that was only a sample size of one. But as we're starting to see, it's kind of – Close to as our to close to our actual score we have today. Yeah, 62-14. The Vulcans won, and like you said, uh, we're still on the right trajectory. I think we, uh, with the way that the game has been going, it can definitely reach that mark. And I mean, it was an interesting thing to uh, play. Yeah. I've never played a a dice game as a to, to simulate a football game, but it was going to be a re-kick as the Vulcans going to get caught off sides but not what you want, especially after a nice kick. Sin Hill, don't think they'd be too mad at that, though. They had a nice game. They uh, got positive yardage off the return. But we'll 
doesn't like the second try. Now, often now as as I come as I come to watch these games, um, the penalties enforced off of kickoffs is when your offense is firing. It's such a dangerous thing; it can be detrimental to a defense or just to a team in general. Biko gets ready to kick off the ball once again, spreading out along that line. Biko walking back, doing his steps, shuffling to the side, getting ready to go. It feels so nice to be in, be in the box. <laughs> 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 Standing out there on the field the whole time, I was just soaking wet now. Feels so nice to be dry. Ball into the air once again, feeling it around the five yard line. Taking it up towards the middle. Has an angle. No, he does not. He's going to stop right at the 26-yard line. So the enforcement of that penalty was all for uh, not as he just didn't get it. Didn't really seem to find a hole and didn't really get as far as he had hoped. Replay of that touchdown. One of the pick sixes we had earlier today. There's the man with three interceptions on your screen, Keith Charney. He had one last week against IUP as well, and so uh, picking up quite a collection yeah. of uh, d defensive uh, defensive turnovers right. for the Vulcans. Where earlier on this season they really struggled in that area, but the last couple of games they've picked it up big time, been able to give the offense a lot more possessions, yeah. been able uh, resulted in not only the wins but also a ton of points on the board as well. Most definitely, first and ten. Play action, dart, incomplete, going towards the inside. Receiver was just completely covered by California. Uh, and as I said earlier, uh, those quick in and out routes are so hard to cover when your corners are and your backs are kind of just sitting off the receiver, but there uh, Vulcan's kind of pressing and uh, able to put some pressure on the receiver there. Seeing Hill taking over once again, second and 10 from the 26 yard line. Run up the middle, making people miss, cutting it to the outside, still on his feet around the 40 yard line. Nice gain, enough there for a Seton Hill first down. Take a quick look at that run again. High snap, was able to keep control of the offensive line, making an amazing hole there. Sees the pressure coming from his left, running, t excuse me, coming from his right, coming to his left now. Trucking over for a nice, looks like a 12 yard gain. Play action, excuse me, handoff, run up the middle for about four yards. Be second and six for Seton Hill. And again, finding the hole again. Uh, Seton Hill, this drive has done the line doing a better job this of uh, this time of making the hole for the running back. Now, of course, when you make a hole, it's just up to the running back to really find it, as he did there. A nice few ga gain of a few yards, as he did the last play. Run game really picking up now, tight end in the formation now. It is another play action pass just out of reach. Pass incomplete for the running back. Tenant for Ashland. It will bring up fourth, bring up third down, excuse me. I believe it will be third and six. Man, these screen passes are really starting to just die and not really go anywhere as it is for the Vulcans. Just out of the hands of the receivers. Run game definitely picking up for Seton Hill. Pass game. A little bit out of sync. Third down. Drop back pass. Running in the middle. Keeping the ball. And it's enough. Lit up. But is enough for a Seton Hill first down. Yeah, that was a great great awareness by the quarterback. Just able to recognize the pressure coming from his left side. And able to just step up into the pocket. And he just knew immediately that he had to take off. And like you said, took a big hit. But it also laid one himself as he was able to to power forward for a big Seton Hill first down. First down looks like they are at the 49 yard line now in California territory. Looking to make a statement drive here. Motion from the running back to the other side. Run up the middle, run, breaking big, going for 10-ish yardage, yards, and there's now a flag on the play. I believe this will be a hold. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty, first down again, number 51 for Seton Hill. 
Kai Marshall on the offensive line. I haven't seen too many penalties from here from this uh, Seton Hill offense much of this game. So that tells you how, how disciplined they have been. Yeah, and two teams coming into today's game that are um, that average a lot of penalty yards a game. So, like you said, a very uh, a good sight to see if you're a fan of either team that they've been able to clean it up a little bit. Yep. Run up the middle by Seton Hill swarmed immediately for a short gain of one or two yards. Welcomes this defensive line this time doing a better job of closing up the holes and for any hopes of a Seton Hill run here as they did there. It is second and 20 for the Griffins. They were in California territory to start, but they're back on their 41-yard line. Definitely not where they want to be, especially when they were already building up a nice little drive they had. And that's just goes to show you how crucial penalties can be and how much they hurt your team. Like you said, the ball's in their territory now, back in their own. Scrambling outside, running to the outside, looking downfield, still throwing the ball. Incomplete pass. That was good there by the Seton Hill quarterback. I believe that's still Qua back there. Um, keeping his eyes downfield as he was running, seemed full speed out of the pocket as he gets close to that sideline, finds a receiver, just unfortunately isn't able to get it get it to him in time. And not only doing that, but also able to break a few tackles along the way. Kept the play alive, like you said, just with his eyes, kept looking down the field, but the Vulcans uh, still able to do their task, able to, to keep everyone covered down the field from the Seton Hill side and able to force an incomplete pass and a third and about 20 now. Third and 20. Motion, receiver to the backfield, looking for a quick dump off, and he is lit up in the backfield. That is an amazing tackle there for California. I believe that is number 47 for California. Taylor, Kawhi Taylor with the amazing tackle there. Amazing wrap up and slam into the ground. There's no way he was getting out of that tackle. Yeah, what a lot of guys do I seem to come to notice is oftentimes they just hit and forget the wrap. But if you wrap, you, um, there's not much the ball carrier can go as he did there. Take away his legs. Where can he go? Yep. California calling their first timeout of the half. And we're going to take another quick look at the PSAC schedule. Of course, once again, this game, Seton Hill, California. California is in the lead. Um, we have Mercyhurst Clarion today, Slippery Rock Gannon, Edinburgh, IUP, East Stroudsburg, Westchester, Shippensburg, Kutztown, Lock Haven, Bloomsburg, Shepherd, Millersville. And we do have... Um, Familiar face joining us in the booth today, Claire Rothermel. She's actually coming from Shippensburg to join us for some homecoming she festivities. Came she came back. She did. You miss her so sometimes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> some of the scores from these games, East Stroudsburg won 28-14 over Westchester. Clarion and Mercyhurst faced off in a tough one where Mercyhurst won 36-35. to The Rock beat Gannon 49-24. Kutztown was able to beat Shippensburg in a whopping 9-6 to affair. And then Shepard able to beat Millersville 33 to 17, and then IUP beating Edinburgh 20 to 10, and then Lockhaven able to beat Bloomsburg 21 to 13. All right, here we go. Fourth down, punt team on. Let's see where we can go. It is fourth and 20 as the punt is boomed into the sky. Caught by California, no fair catch signal, but wrapped up just about immediately. Maybe a gain of one. Be now first and ten, Vulcans from the 44-yard line. California's defense really making a statement there. They may be uh, started out on the 49-yard line, going into the end zone, but California really backed them up. A lot of self-inflicted damage there too. Some pen penalties, excuse me. Not what uh, Seton Hill wanted. Yeah, Vulcans, top four in the PSAC West in, their, in terms of defense. And it has shown this game in terms of how disciplined they've been and how well they've been able to keep the Seton, this Seton Hill offense on their heels. It looks like there is a flag being caused by the California offense. False start 
for California by number 69, Oates, Orts, excuse me, on the O line. California backed up now. It is uh, first and 15. Running back in the backfield. Handoff to the out far side. Looks like he is stopped for no gain and no loss. California seemed to have slowed down just a tad. No really attempts on any explosive plays. Been a lot of runs on these past couple of downs. Yeah, I mean, and whenever you just started the game off like that so strong where you already have such a commanding lead, now's the time to just go back to the fundamentals, just try to uh, just try to get a, a lot of the time off the clock whenever you do have the ball, just try to close things out. That's why I'm not good at Madden. When I have the ball, I'm throwing it no matter what. <laughs> Drop back pass towards the sideline. It is close. It was it, it was caught, it looks like. I think they're going to wave him out of bounds. And there's a new Vulcan quarterback. Is uh, Alex Aldridge, the backup quarterback, in there? And that'll be the end of Davis Black's day. Because, like you said, the Vulcans already have such a commanding lead. Might as well give their uh, give the boys a little bit of a rest. But Aldridge took a big hit <laughs> as he was throwing that time and trying to find Fister on that far side. And Fister able to make the catch, but just couldn't keep the feet in bounds. Third and 17 for the Vulcans. One safety deep, drop back pass, running backwards and just lit up as the catch. A little bit of pushing and shoving there. But it was complete for a loss. It'll be fourth and. And like Braxton was saying earlier, just the, the screen passes for either team just uh, not on the mark. Yeah. And we'll be back here on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSA Seat Network. Are you a Penn West, California student looking to get involved in media? You have two great choices, and for both, all majors are welcome. CUTV is the home for Vulcan sports. Be a part of 80-plus live games, both home and on the road. We're looking for announcers, camera operators, graphic operators, and much more. There are also opportunities to develop your own shows. Go to our YouTube page, CUTV Sports 1, and see all of the content. WCAL Radio gives you the opportunity to play your music and develop your own show. Be heard locally over the air in a 40-mile radius and worldwide online. That's 91.9 FM, Power 92. SAI Media of CUTV and WCAL. Get out, join up, be seen, and be heard. Welcome back, everyone. California lead, 41 to eight in the fourth quarter. California with just an amazing performance overall, even though they are getting ready to punt here on fourth and 17 to get Seton Hill the ball back. Boom, away, far into the rainy sky. Bouncing, received, oh, low tackle there. Looks like it was around the 28, 27 yard line. Now we have time, we're gonna take a quick look at the California schedule. They are, of course, here now um, against Seton Hill with a commanding lead. Next week, they will play at Slippery Rock, which is first in the PSAC. Mercyhurst, and they're back home at, for Mercyhurst, and then the last two games are on the road. Gannon and East Stroudsburg, California. Uh, definitely gonna have a battle next week against Seton Hill. What, number one and number two in the PSAC West going head to head. That definitely be a game you don't want to miss. For sure. First and ten for Seton Hill. Drop back pass. Pull up the middle. Running, scrambling for some good yardage, looking for some blocks. Cutting back towards the close sideline. He's still going and he's out for an amazing around a 20 yard gain. He sees that pressure coming from both sides. He got a hand on him, but was able to get just out of there. Amazing protection with the ball there, keeping the ball from fumbling there. As he cuts towards the California sideline, past the 40, past the 50, for an amazing gain there. 
And now there is a timeout, California. Yeah, Coach Dunn probably not liking what he's seeing. Uh, the last couple of plays, this QB has scrambled, has got, gotten some yards and even more. Probably will come up with a different game plan here. And now as uh, we get another moment here, we're going to take a look at the Seton Hill uh, schedule. Excuse me. California, as they're playing right now, they play home against IUP and Edinburgh in the next coming weeks. They also finish their season off on the road against Mercyhurst and Millersville. Some also some more games you don't want to miss on their side. Of course, don't forget, California sports is always always going on. So be sure to tune in to CUTV Sports 1 to catch the California sports. One thing I'd like to point out this second half of this game, both teams' offenses are seeming just to stall out as I'm guessing both teams really tired themselves out uh, in this first half. Definitely. It's now first and 10 for Seton Hill. Three receivers to the top of the screen, running back in a tight end in the formation. Tight end blocking, deep shot. That is juggled, but incomplete on the far sideline. This is incomplete. Tender for fame. Ball just couldn't be secured good enough. It's juggled there on the sideline. He had a chance to come down with it for a nice gain, but nevertheless, it does end up incomplete. Second and 10 for the Griffins. Not much doing in terms of passing in the second half of this game. I'm not sure if it's been the rain or if everybody's cold or just haven't really been much. Hasn't ball hasn't balls haven't been too accurate in the air. Drop at pass and there is a flag on the play. I believe this will be on the offense. Ball starts. Offense. Ball start on the offense. Second down. Second down. It'll be now second and 15 for Seton Hill. Gary getting all nice and excited for some donuts we have up here in the booth. <laughs> Got to keep the director happy. We'll have a nice little broadcast. And he, as he muffles on, <laughs> on the donut. So I don't know what he just said. Drop back pass. Coming. Going far. Deep. A little bit of contact there. It could have been called. PI, but nothing, just overthrown. We'll will bring up third down it's for the Griffins. Third down. Yeah, as I said earlier, passing game, just nothing doing the second half. Is really, neither quarterback has really been able to put it uh, on the spot as the accuracy from, just from both sides have just gone. I'm assuming just how cold everyone is and all the rain and the wetness that's set in as this game has gone on. Third and 15 for the Griffins. Motion by the tight end to the other side of the field. And there is another flag by the offense, I believe. Yeah, but it's going to be a false start again. False start. Offense. Number five. Five-yard penalty. Third down. False start once again on the offense, except this time on number five. That is the um, wide receiver, Bales Jr., Third and 20 now for the Griffins. Two receivers at the top, one at the bottom. Tight end motioning once again. One running back in the back. Drop back pass, pressure from everywhere. Screen pass just pass off the mark complete. there. Looks like he was trying to hit his uh, tight end, I believe. Fourth, down and 20. fourth and 20. Punt team now coming on. Yeah, screens today from either side have pretty much been ineffective not much going on in those areas for either team California getting ready to receive the punt I believe that is Willis back there Willis the third return punt is boomed into the sky farther fair catch signaled at the 15 yard line and he just bumped a little bit there a little bit of Frustration coming out of the punt team. Punt teams are players uh, just as important as anything. Sometimes they don't get as much credit. A little frustration coming out from the punt team there, though. There we go on the sideline. 
our cheer team just hanging out there in the rain. Definitely, they seem a little cold. They've done a lot of dancing today, though, having some fun with the amount of points California has put on a lot of cheering, even just from the band alone. Just some amazing music being played by the California band. California takes over at the 16-yard line. Motion from the running back to the other side. Ooh, some false start by a receiver, I believe, for the California Vulcans. Offense, number 62. A five-yard penalty, first down. Kind of just a mis miscommunication there as a slot and I believe an end or the back right behind the tackle there. Both kind of moved at the same time and just weren't on the same page. King, Jacob King blamed for the false start there on the offensive line. Two receivers to the bottom, one to the top, running back and a tight end also in the formation. Ball is snapped, drop back pass, pressure coming, but just off the mark there. Looks like he got one hand on it, couldn't do much more about it. Pass is incomplete. Looks like he was targeting number 88 for the Vulcans. Eight, number 88 is Zach Schom Schommers. Excuse me, 89, uh, Johnson, the receiver. Yeah, ball just put just behind him. Couldn't really much do much with that. California now second and 15. Ball ran to the outside. Looks like it gets back to the original first down mark. It'll, excuse me, just a little short of that first one. It is third and 11 or tw 11 it looks like. California looking like they're keeping the three receivers on the bottom, one on the top. Running back in the backfield. Not a lot of empty sets usually ran by the Vulcans. Because if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Ball snapped, looking to the close sideline. And it is intercepted. First turnover caused by Seton Hill so far. Seton Hill set up in some Really good field position. We'll take a quick look at that replay. Ball snapped. Looked like he just had his target set. Pressure in his face. Looks like number zero for the Seton Hill Griffins. Just there for it. The interception is credited to Dosh. It's a D, D lineman. Yeah, Dosh there just kind of read his eyes the whole way and just had it from the start. It wasn't much with, with that play that anyone could do with. Seton Hill back for uh, first and goal, actually. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, the interception was by Johnson, the cornerback. Play running to the outside, cutting for an angle, gains him yards, but a Bump, stays inbound. Looks like there is a fumble on the field. Ball is fumbled out of bounds. I believe there was a fumble. Let's take a quick look at that replay. Kind of just took two hits there too. Two very powerful ones. Slips out of that tackle there. But bam, one. Stays inbounds. Someone coming in for that. The ball is fumbled as it goes out of bounds. Seton Hill will retain possession. We've had a few... Uh, Solid hits in today's game. Probably the most I've seen in these last few weeks. We've covered covered these games. Second and goal from the 11. Second and goal from the 11. A little behind the sticks there. 12.31. 12.30 left to go in this fourth quarter. Heavy set on the line. Two running backs, one receiver. Run to the outside again. Making people miss, tackled inside the 10 yard line. The ball carrier. Looks like it'd be around the six or seven yard line. Rain still coming down as you can see on the screen. Just wanna keep this ball running, keep the clock moving. California doesn't wanna see much coming out of the pass game. I'm gonna keep that clock moving, just run out this game. A lot of time left, but California down. seems to have a strong, firm lead in this game. Seton Hill 
Third and goal on the eight. Ball snapped. Drop back pass. A lot of pressure. Running out of the pocket, looking to make something happen. But he is sacked by California. Number 47 credited there. And that is Taylor. Khalil Taylor with the amazing diving sack there. He had him dead to rights. Couldn't get out of that one. Just one arm on the leg. It's all you need to get someone down. Stop their legs. Stop them from moving. And despite the weather, this... Open field tackling here by uh, both teams. Seemingly on point, which open field tackling is a hard thing in, a, in and of itself. Add the weather and that makes it even harder. Despite that, these teams are on top. There is a timeout taken by Seton Hill. 10.53 left to go in this game. 41 to eight, California in the lead. Amazing plays being made by both sides. A lot of, uh, both teams seem like they've definitely just Put a lot of their second string players in. Look at the flags being waved by the California fans. That's that's commitment to a team right there. It's a lot of rain. If I wasn't in this box, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> uh, luckily, everyone here for the crew is nice and dry. Cameras and directors, of course. And he just dropped the flag. Oh, oh it broke. Oh, no. We're going to... That's very hilarious. We're going we're gonna to replay that real quick. That's it. Waving that nice and hard, and then all of a sudden. Huh. He just, he, that's how much he's been waving that flag around. Just a lot of waving it back and forth, and then it just breaks. And he's got it back up and running again, though. Can't stop that. That's determination right there. And now he's just giving up. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Seton Hill back out onto the field. Fourth and 13, going for it. <laughs> 13 yards. Need 13 yards for the score, or the Vulcans will turn. Will get the ball back. Drop back pass, looking to the inside, close field, dart, touch down. Touchdown, Seton Hill. Touchdown, Seton Hill. Take a quick look at that. That was just an absolute dart to the uh, closer side of the field, still towards the middle of the field. It looked like drop back patch. Takes his time. He has a lot of time in the pocket there just to throw it and sling it in. Hit in the back, but was able to keep possession. Awaiting the extra point. Looks like Seton Hill's gonna stay on the field, going for a two-point conversion. Second point, second two-point conversion. First one was a fake field goal. See how this one goes. Rolling out the pocket, a lot of pressure in his face. Throwing it back, shoulder, and it is bobble dropped. Excuse me. Two-point conversion is failed. And we'll be back here on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSA Seat Network. Vulcan Volleyball is back, and you can have the best seat in the house. The Convocation Center will be rocking with 11 home games featuring some of the best teams in the region and the PSAC. All home games will be streamed live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans on all social media platforms for up-to-date schedules and information. Vulcan Volleyball and you, a winning combination. Hello and welcome back. Uh, failed two-point conversion by Seton Hill. Score is 14 to 41. Similar to that game you, you and uh, Gary were playing earlier as we get ready to take off yeah. kick off this game. Except, you know, we don't have 61 point, 62 points, but 14 points. Let's see if we can stop him there. Some whistles on the field before the kickoff. Let's see what's going on. Boy, I have a d game delay here. I'm not yeah. quite sure what's really going on. 
either that or the rook coach wanted to talk to the referee. Here he comes now. Sideline warning, Seton Hill. Sideline warning, Seton Hill. To be honest, that's honestly, honestly one of the last calls I expected. Especially when the game's this far put away. Yeah. Usually not usually something you see. You usually see that more in close games as your team is a lot more riled up. Yeah. Here we go. Kickoff going towards California. Boom. There it goes towards the end zone. It is fielded in the end zone. Down to a knee. Take it out to the 25-yard line. From the 25. Here we are once again standing in the booth looking dapper as ever. <laughs> as first game where me and you called. It's been an amazing experience so far. Yeah. Especially with the score and the, just the plays that have been made. Gary um, ducking the camera. There he is having some fun eating my food. <laughs> and there he goes with another fry. There, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> As he floats it, floats it into his mouth. California comes out to the 25-yard line. And now he's complaining because the fries are cold. <laughs> and now he's moving Wolverine around. Play by play for the broadcast booth. <laughs> California, first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Drop back pass. Pressure coming up. But he is able to get it out to the running back for a first down plus some out of bounds. Nice play there by California. A little, that little wobbly ball there, it looked like. Yeah, pocket seemed to be swarm, but how the presence of mind is to stay in the pocket and complete the pass there. Devontae Williams on the catch. <laughs> Running back in the far back field behind Black. Fullback in the on right behind the offensive line. Two receivers in the bottom, one on the top. Running play up the middle for a nice three to four yard gain. Gain of three on the play. Second down and seven. Umpire having to dry up the ball there. which I imagine at this point in the game, we're gonna see a lot of it from here on out. Second and six for the Vulcans, getting the call from the sideline. It was Black calling the plays instead of him getting the play calls himself. Pass for the California that is into the hands and out of the hands of the California receiver. Incomplete pass there. Wet ball making it a little bit more difficult to hold on to, but at this point, California is really padding their stats at this point. Game pretty far put away. Nine minutes and 12 seconds left to go. Whoever can get their hands on the ball, they're definitely going to want to. California getting ready for their third down attempt. Third and six on Seton Hill, 42 yard line. Low snap in day, uh, and the quarterback just falls right on top of it. Alex, Alex Hartledge just bobbled that one as that was a low snap. Great job to recover it and just fall on it. Punt coming for California now. California on their own 20, 42 yard, 42 yard line, getting ready to punt. Punt is boomed away, bouncing at the 30, past the 30, to the 25, little pass there. Going for a cut up, just stopped just past the 30 yard line. As Seton Hill will get ready to take over now. There is Coach Gary Dunn walking the sidelines. 
of a very strong performing California team on both sides. This play is being made all First over the field, the uh, especially by Amari Hopkins on offense with three touchdowns on the day. Yeah, Amari Hopkins definitely a favorite target of Black, and their chemistry definitely shows on the field. Most definitely. Like Noah Mitchell said, he, Jaquay Jackson last year, had that amazing, amazing chemistry just practicing with each other one-on-one, -on -one, building that chemistry. Obviously, tonight you can see that Mario Hopkins, definitely one of Davis Black's favorite target, targets. First and 10 for Seton Hill. Run to the outside, stays in bounds, ran out of bounds on the far sideline for Seton Hill for a reception. first down, it looks like. Short of the line again. Short, short, excuse me. Second and one. Second down and two from the 40. Some random horns coming from the parking lot. Again, as that has just continued. 7.46 left to go. Second and one. Run, kept by the quarterback. And it looks like he is either at the line or just past it. Uh, with the quarterback keeper, it is a first, first down, down. Seton Hill Griffins. I'd also like to give a quick shout out to Gloria and, CUT and the CUTV alumni tailgate. Give everyone there a shout out, especially former, uh, former Professor Jim Carter. Shout out to them, people that put years of work into this program. Uh, so people like me and Braxton got a shot. Run to the outside. Just swarmed by California. Nice carry, the ball carrier. Clock continuing to run. 6.55 left to go in this game. And Caraballo on the stop. Third, and second, eight. and eight now for the Seton Hill Griffins. Ball snapped, run, kept by the quarterback to the outside, and he seems to just be put in the air. On the ball Amazing tackle there by California, third and four. From what we've seen in this game so far, the QB keep on this on the option play they've run so much today is uh, quite rare. Um, got to gain a few yards on that play there. Hill, third and six. Drop back pass to the sideline. The running back, it is first down, ran out of, hit out of bounds, excuse me, by California. Stopping the clock, excuse me, the clock continues, will continue to run actually. First down, Seton Hill. Snap run up the middle. There's the ball carrier. No gain on the play. It looks like it'll be second Hill and ten for the Seton Hill Griffins. Stop. Again on the play, second down. Lot, a lot of the energy that this area, uh, on the just the stands in general, seems to just died out a little bit. Not very many people left in the stands. Drop back pass for Seton Hill. Running up the middle, feeling the pressure it is brought down for a minimal game of around one or two yards. Let's take a quick look at that little scramble. Feels the pressure coming from all sides. Welcomes this time doing a better job of uh, containing the QB, applying the pressure, but this time actually able to get the QB and keep it to a gain of about a yard. 39 for Seton Hill. Oh. 
Pass, looking to the sidelines, in. Caught, going towards the sideline for Seton Hill. It looks like a nice three yard gain for Seton Hill. Clock continues to run here, even though the ball was ran out of bounds. Fourth down and five from the 40. Four and five. Seton Hill seems to be like they're going to stay on the field. Two receivers on each side, tied in on the close side of the field, the running back on the far side, still in the backfield though. Ball snap, drop back pass for Verts. It looks like shallow across the middle. Deep bomb out of bounds. Incomplete turnover on and downs. California incomplete. will take over Welcome now on the 40 yard line. Welcomes that time there going into it seem about a cover two defense, maybe even more as I didn't I missed the safeties back there, but kind of just read the uh, Griffin's uh, offense there like a book when it was able to uh, cause an incompletion there. California see who they bring out onto the field. Assuming California with this lead with three minutes left to go, trying to just run this clock out to the two minute warning. Yeah, I'd imagine they'd keep it on the ground like Seton Hill has done for most of the last drive. Ball snapped, run up the middle. Still going, pushing through, excuse me, no. It's just the pile. Two yard gain by California. Julius chanting, I believe we will win. Second down and eight. I have a feeling they're, they're not wrong. <laughs> Here they are in their uh, raincoats there, chilling, having some fun. Oh. Maybe not as much fun now that I think about it. They're all wet and just dripping with rain. <laughs> Unfortunate for them, but it's part of the sport. Snap, and there is a lag, I believe. Play a game. Offense. Play a game on the offense. Second down. Second down for the Vulcans. Kind of just an, a miscommunication there. Aldridge taking a little bit too much time to get the snap off. Ball snapped, run to the outside, looking for a cutback lane, going back towards the middle of the field, able to get a little bit of gain. Ball clock continues to run. Williams the ball carrier. This is way up to about the 41 yard line. Second and 10. Bring up a third down third and 10. And nine. Minute 51 left to go in this game. I forgot there's no two minute warning in college. <laughs> California, third and nine. Just wanting to milk this clock as much as possible. Going to kill the clock, drop back pass, going for California. Pressure from the outside, sack by Seton Hill. As yeah, pressure coming off there off the edge. Um, say if you're not looking for it, there's not much you can do there. Arledge scram trying to scramble out of the pocket, but just a bit too late. A little over a minute left to go. Clocking pushed up to one minute and 25 seconds. Fourth down, the Vulcans, the punt coming in just a moment. 
wait for the clock to be adjusted. Please reset the game clock to 125. Seton Hill has elected to take their third timeout. Timeout. The clock is getting reset Seton because Hill. Seton Hill takes their last timeout. Clock not seeming to need to be adjusted quite yet. There it goes. There it goes. Clock is now <laughs> readjusted to made it in 25 seconds left to go. <laughs> There's the band having themselves a day. Amazing music, all as always, performed by the California band. Fun coming now for the Vulcans. Punt is a shorter punt to around the 40, 35 yard line. as the Seton Hill offense now comes onto the field. First and 10 Griffins from the 37. Minute 17 left to go. There's a band once again. It's having the time of their lives. <laughs> this, is what they, what they, what they, this is what they come here to do. Have some fun, play some music. And that's what they've done today. Here comes Seton Hill back onto the field. First and 10 for the Griffins. Run coming from the receiver and that was in motion. Taken down More pretty quickly here. there. Gain of two on the play. Kind of just lost his footing there. Wasn't able to go anywhere else really. Second down and eight. Second and eight. motion looks like the same exact play except it's a toss to the running back of the outside as he takes it towards the sideline he was taken down in bounds the clock will continue to run here with 34 yeah. seconds left to go and that looks like unless Seton Hill decides to take another play they can just run this third clock out down. it's now third down 22 seconds on the clock clock is rolling though Seems like they will try to squeeze in one more play. See what they can do. Drop back pass. Pressure coming from the side. Deep pass down the field. Incomplete clock will stop with 9.7 seconds left to go in the game. But there is a flag on the play. On the close sideline. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what that penalty even would be. The close sideline, definitely not. At least pass interference on the far side on that play. Maybe holding um, on the defense. Waiting the call. Twelve men on the field on the defense. The five-yard penalty results in the first step. The clock will start on the snap. Penalty was on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Clock will start on the snap. Nine seconds left to go. I believe one more play here for Seton Hill. Drop back pass towards the sideline in the middle of the field, actually. Taken down. Clock rolls out three, two, one. And that is the game. California Vulcans will win 41 to 14 here on homecoming night. Congratulations to the Vulcans there. Congratulations to Derek Harshberger and Sarah Cedar for winning homecoming king and queen. But that's all we got for you guys. Again, the score is 41 to 14 here on homecoming night. My name is Jay Robson, along with Braxton Turner. And thank you for watching so much here on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network.